UBC is produced by Backgammon Galaxy. Play among the stars. Hi there. This is the amazing team who made the UBC production that you're watching right now. You can support us by donating any amount using this QR code or the link in the description below. Donate $50 or more to get a personal shout out later in the video by Mark Olson. Donate $1,000 to get a shout out and your own custom avatar on Galaxy. Thank you so much for your support. Another way to support Backgammon Galaxy is to place your sports bets on BetGalaxy.net, the fastest way to build your Bitcoin bankroll while Bitcoin is skyrocketing. BetGalaxy.net is a Bitcoin-only bookmaker created by the Galaxy team and accepts players worldwide. Create an account now and place your sports bets. Welcome back, everybody, to match nine of the UBC um, of the finals between Mochi and Hideaki. Uh, wow, has it been exciting so far. Um, after Hideaki getting off to a very big lead and then maintaining that through some of day two, um, Mochi closed out day two with four straight points unanswered uh, to tie the series up, right? And yeah. you know, it's, it, it's, it's easy to, to say that's what you expect out of Mochi, but at the, you know, you do, and, but still it's an unbelievable accomplishment. It takes a lot of luck to make that happen, but. But I'm Nick Blazier, welcoming you back. I've got Mark Olson with me. What do you think of, hey, Nick. of day three coming up here? Oh, it's going to be so exciting. Yeah, like you said, that was a, a heck of a comeback from uh, Super Grandmaster Mochi. It really was, uh, especially uh, match eight, where he literally played a perfect match. Uh, so did Hideaki. It was 0. 0.7 yeah. versus <laughs> 1.0 or something like this. Crazy stuff. Uh, yeah. So Mochi is back and he's still trailing a bit in the average PR, which is going to prove to be decisive if it ends in a 12-12 draw after 12 yeah. matches. Uh, but the, the, I think the, the UBC championship here is, uh, is wide open. Uh, it's up for grabs. It's going to be super, super tight competition from yeah. now on. Right. Super small edge to Hideaki with that tiebreaker, I suppose. But I mean, he must feel great coming into day three with the better average PR after this many matches too, right? Like it's unlikely that that'll be overcome. I and... think he should. I think he should feel better because I mean, yeah. he would have definitely uh, sold it for the, having this this spot uh, before they even started. But Hideaki yeah. was up four points. He was up 6-2 and he was up 8-4. So I'm not yeah. sure that he feels too good about this this spot here. He might be a little bit uh, anxious or sad that he gave. Very true. Very true. Yep. It's a tough end to day two, and it's also super frustrating to play a one PR and still lose that PR point. Right? Like, what else can you do? <laughs> yeah. uh, it's just not fair sometimes. Yes. But uh, yeah, I really look forward to it. I think myself and everyone are super impressed with the challenger in this one. And of course, Mochi's doing Mochi things, right? So yes. it's been such an exciting matchup. I can't wait, can't wait to watch day three. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, why don't we get started, Nick? Match nine yeah. coming up. Let's do it. Um, well, day, day two was a good day for me. Um, I made some comeback. Uh, now our score is tied, but still I'm a huge dog in the PR race, so I need to win uh, at least five out of eight uh, scores. Um, yeah, so I should I do just uh, do my best, um, you know. Um, as day one and day two, I will try to play as usual, and uh, I would like you to watch and enjoy. Um, my best play and uh, my humanic play. Thank you. And we're back, Nick. Day three, yeah. match nine. Back in the Japanese room. We've got the contender. Exciting stuff. Those interviews are very interesting too. I like, um, I think it's funny to hear Mochi call himself a uh, a big dog with the what like point three difference, which I mean he's he's right probably, but it's also just feels very close. And uh, Hideaki's attitude is always just very calm, intending to play his best game, and I really believe he does that over the board, which is uh, it's great. You know, you can't worry about your opponent and what they're gonna do and any adjustments or anything like that. You just play your best, and yeah, it's working for him. Yes, he's been very consistent so far. It might be a little bit of. Mochi downplaying his own expectations um, mm -hmm. because, of course, he does have a chance. And there we have the champion coming into the room. Yeah. To the I think if, 
Mochi was playing his expected average at 2.75 though, right? Like Hideaki is still beating that by a little bit. Um, so truly playing on that, you know, top possible level. Really yes. amazing stuff. Yeah. Okay, and both players seem to be ready now. So on day three, we had a bit of a shift, Nick. Look at the board. We changed the board and now they are playing on the new Galaxy 2021 board, the Earth board. And uh, nice. there we go. First roll of the match. So the, the Earth board, it has the same design as the Neptune board, but uh, different materials, different checkers, handmade checkers from, from Turkey. And uh, and a diff completely different look from the futuristic Neptune to the more Earth-like and vintage style Earth board. Yeah, it does look very classic and very new at the same time. It's cool. I like it. And we're off here. Whoa, that's a pretty bad fan there for Mochi. This looks yeah, like a double. Usually, I think it's, it's usually good enough for a cube. He's going to make the rack so often here, right? Um, probably can't be a pass with that blot and potentially not covering it, but. Uh, those early two-point board fans can be worth a cube, especially with that slot. Yes, exactly, especially with the slot because mm -hmm. of the purity here. I don't see Mochi passing here. It seems like a very easy cube, uh, easy take for me. Okay, yeah, yeah it is a, it's a big cube and a big take. Uh, not too mm -hmm. much here. I think both decisions are quite easy. I would be very surprised mm -hmm. if Mochi were to drop this cube so early in the game. Mm -hmm. But let's see. I mean, he does think a little bit. Maybe, I mean, every day when you come in, you have to get warmed up. You have to get the neurons firing. Uh, yeah. Maybe match one, game one. It's uh, you got to adjust a little bit. Yeah. And he has a tendency to need to think about these things, right? So I, I'd like to see him. Even though we've seen some crazy clock pressure in this match already, I, I mean, he just needs to take his time on this and make sure he doesn't make a mistake that he doesn't yeah. need to make. Good right? play from Mochi. It's true. The the time pressure from Mochi has def definitely been one of the storylines in this UBC mm. championship battle so far. Mochi has been playing some really, really amazing backgammon, except for when he's been under time pressure. What a tough decision this is, too, between the split and the down. Uh, no mistakes possible, really. But, um, yeah, I don't know why down just looks so much more natural to me. You're on offense. Your Your opponent has stacks. Why do you want to split into that? Um, but but you've made the counter argument over and over again to this mm -hmm. this whole challenge that you know you need to be working from both sides, right? Yeah, so. you, you got to balance it out and have connectivity yeah. during blitz, which is by the way a Roberti expression, Roberti that we had uh, the pleasure of meeting in the match analysis for match seven. Mm -hmm. So yeah, both fours looked fine to me, and they were actually equally good. One is good for the offense, one is good for the defense. Yeah. And uh, this a6, I, the four down really makes it hard for him to come out to the bar now. So that's an interesting play. And he's, he's seeing that, that the 13 to seven might be required now because all the, you might need to hang on to your anchor. You really are in risk of being blitzed with 10 checkers in the zone. Yeah, this um, is a tough play to find, to be honest, because I mean, usually yeah. you don't want to expose yourself to a direct shot from your opponent's back checkers. So sure. definitely playing out to the 18 point is the default play, but yeah. Mochi might find the best play here. I think you Oops. already, uh, okay, yeah. this is the human human play. Well, there's some other things you'll notice are that like the six, one, two, and three are all duplicated, right? Uh, six, four even makes a point maybe. Um, you're not sad about that, right? Um, and in addition, it's a common theme to play off the bar when you're just losing badly and you need to develop. You know, you need to just get some offense to counterplay and you keep your anchor. It's you're true. You're never going to get blitzed and just closed out if you it's do that. True. Yeah, so he looks I, at yeah. Oh, that's a good play, Mochi. Yeah. Oh, he does make the play. That's such a good play. That's yeah. a really good play. I wish I could find that play as well. Maybe you could, Nick. You argued very well for this play, I think. But yeah, uh, yeah. Mochi is down in the race, which gives him a slight timing edge, actually, if they do go into a priming battle. Obviously, he's still down in the priming battle because of the inferior structure of his mm -hmm. offensive structure. But um, yeah, I mean, Mochi is definitely doing the best he can. I think the, the duplication that you mentioned, Nick, the 6-2, 6-1, 6-3, 6 all of these numbers are great for building on Hideaki's side of the board. So the duplication mm -hmm. was strong. Small mistake here from Hideaki, uh, the Middle Eastern split coming up with both. A little yeah. inaccuracy, but not, nothing too big. A strange looking play. I'm not sure why. I guess he didn't want to strip his midpoint. Doesn't feel like he needs to leave more fly shots, maybe. Um, understandable, but you know, it's the tendency to play a little bit tight. Yeah. 
it's usually a gammon save style move uh, he, of course he saves a lot with rolling the double deuces from the bar now he has a really beautiful beautiful position here Hideaki beautiful prime this is awkward you must have to do this um, yeah yeah I think I like keeping the further out blocking point exactly. but it's I guess giving up the mids not so bad when when opponents mid is split or sorry stripped like this it, yeah and uh, if you can uh, exchange the midpoint for a blocking point that's part of your prime usually you want to do it and that's what yeah. happened here uh, this double four however is also a little bit awkward maybe even more awkward yeah it seems like it must just be from the 13, but I, I like yeah. that, that the the 9 to 5 is kind of the more forced piece of it. So sure, go ahead and look at that first. He and does see if you can find right some thing. other option. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's a legal move. Oh. Dion Checker, wow. What a what joker. A shot. Yeah, what a joker that was. Complete turnaround in a game that was looking pretty scary for Mochi. Yes, and now he's up four pips after this 6-4. Of course, yep. Hideaki should stay on the anger here. He's down in the race after the move so he should just right now he's considering will i get a shot now or will i get a shot in the future and that mm -hmm. dictates his strategy if he wants to, if he thinks he's going to get a shot now he should play tight with making the deuce point which mm -hmm. is the play he's looking at here if he thinks the shot will not come now but in the future he could play more pure and just slot two points maybe but uh, mm -hmm. it seems that the bot really liked hideaki's play and now mochi's considering the cube yeah, he's got the racing lead, but I mean, he's he's super happy to have the cube here and hopefully hang on to it until he has a more cashable position. He just needed um, to count the race. That's it. That's all. Yeah. yeah. Four pips is nowhere near enough when you're up against an advanced anger. This is an awkward roll. Um, maybe the best. Okay. Yeah. You just, <laughs> wow. Look at the, How do you find this play? That's yes. tough. Yeah. The 12 to three jumps out at me. It's just like, I guess it's time to leave a fly shot. Yeah, um, but you don't want to leave any shots here. That's a good play Mochi is looking at here. Uh, I think the computer play 6-2, 6-1 is probably going to be more difficult for him to find, but I think he's going to make this play, to be honest, because now, mm -hmm. he's, now he's going to consider the fly shot, and then he's going to realize he doesn't want to leave four shots here. He's yeah. outboard. Okay, he's looking at it. Oh, and that's the play. Now he's going to look at it, and he's going to count its four shots, blah, blah, blah. No. Just make it, yeah. Uh, I thought, yeah, I thought he was going to make a bit of play there. Um, it doesn't look that much more pure is the problem with it, right? You do volunteer the shots and you still have to put an extra checker on the three behind the anchor. So yes. it doesn't... And the race is so close that you're actually blocking with this point. You're not enough ahead to, to be clearing from the rear and leaving four shots. The mm, race is way too close. I think he probably feared that he was going to have such a hard time attacking Hideaki if he ran or making the five point after either of the other plays. Um, you know, so it looks like you're laying down to 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 racing a little bit too much, which I guess is his favorite game plan, though. So you should just stick with it. Um, well, the more you're ahead in the race, the more you just want to race. But here, the pip count is actually quite close, so that's why he he needs mm -hmm. to have some priming still. Maybe Mochi was thinking that with his play, it's going to be easier to prime or blitz when uh, Hideaki is eventually uh, forced off the anchor. But it's just mm -hmm. the wrong idea, leaving four shots. Actually, I remember having this lesson from playing against Mochi in the first mm. Denmark versus the world. I think we're back in 2007 or eight or something like this. And I was playing against Mochi. I was a young kid back then. And uh, I made a similar play. I played pure and left like three fly shots. And Mochi was like shaking his head. And after the game, he told me, no, 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 don't leave any shots here. And this yeah. was actually very similar to this position, exactly the same con concept. That was a really close decision oh, yes. there wow, between yeah. running off the anchor and not. Um, yeah. And he looked at it, but went with uh, kind of intuitive, just safe play. It doesn't feel like you need to do it. But now he is punished for it a little bit because it's going to be very hard to leave on a six next roll now. Mochi rolls the perfect board construction roll. That was actually a very tricky uh, decision for Hideaki. Luckily for him, uh, it was borderline, so he didn't make any mistakes at the move. But that was a tricky one. This one yeah, really... for Mochi, is that really that difficult? Um, to find the best you get play. another checker in you're closer to clearing and racing so I mean it's this is the racing play but I do feel like you need to play for the sixes where he comes off or fives even right yeah yes exactly yeah, yeah he doesn't I mean not that he has a free five to play out there but you know like exactly. Hideaki doesn't want to break his board he wants to run next roll and yes. I think you should prepare for that exactly the timing favors the yeah exactly this play Hideaki is in mobility trouble here he's going to be forced off with a six and you want the strong four point board and even the fives, as Nick mentioned, uh, he's not going to leave the, even with uh, with four, five and three, five, he's still going to stay put on his anger. 
And but he has to break the. Oh, that's not a good play, Mochi. He's missing out on so much blitz value here when Hideaki is forced to run. Uh, luckily, it turned green after the. Oh, move. look at this! And after that play, Hideaki can just play huge, but he misses oh, that. Oh, wow, 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 wow! But he almost baits oh. that that error in there too. I mean, this should be a pretty easy cube to find now too with the market loss. Um, wow! Yes. That was yeah. a big one from Hideaki, but what a tricky play. I think the blunder for Hideaki was not seeing it. He should have looked at it. Yeah, he didn't see it as so much dead checkers and the huge board advantage and the potential double shot, maybe. You know, like there's a lot of good things working for it. I don't know if I find that play if I think about it anyway. This isn't like the clear situation where you do that, right? No, it's, it's tricky. It's definitely tricky. Yeah. But I think that's why the mistake was not looking at it and, and see yeah. if you could find it, even though it was a super advanced play. Such a dramatic mm -hmm. play to split the anger to gain more contact value. Um, but he did have a five-point board versus a three-point board with a blot. And now yeah. he's facing a really tough recube. Really I want to really imagine tough. that Mochi's error was specifically to draw out that blunder. <laughs> that would be some good gamesmanship, but I doubt it. No. And look at this. This is also, uh, I mean... I guess I'd have to think about this some, but I feel like this is like almost a snap take in a way. Like you just have contact, you have some race to, yeah, um, it's close. you know, like there's immediate shot leaving rolls. You have the perfect board. Like it's tough for me to, yes. even if like these are passes sometimes, like I'm probably just going to take this. It's just, it's too close and you're going to be right most of the time. Yeah. So. The race here is right in that um, sword edge or knife's edge yeah. where it's like if you're 16, uh, pips down, then you got to drop. If you're 12 pips down, then it's an easy take. But with 14 pips, it's right there where it's, it makes it difficult uh, whether to take or, or pass. Mm. Um, I would lean towards the take as well, 14 pips and some contact value. But the thing is that the contact value, it, you have the immediate shots, like 6-1, six, 6-2. Six, and yeah. what else do we have? 6-5 as well. Uh, yeah. So three shots. Okay, he does drop it. Um, yeah, but Mochi would still have a, have a better position if he had played the better play uh, with... Uh, I sure. think maybe that's why the other play was so much better, because then Hideaki couldn't make this contact split with, uh, with a number like 3-1. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I think he had to prepare for that, for, for him to make a max yes. contact play with the five-point board. The new 2021 Galaxy Earth board is a tournament luxury board optimized for travel. Pre-order now. Details in the description below. Um, and also, if, if Hideaki knows those are close, then that's also, I guess, a fine pass, you know, if yeah. you're, as long as he's certain that it can't be a big error. Um, yeah. I mean, we're never really certain over the board, but he probably had a comfortable yeah. feeling that uh, he wasn't, probably wasn't going to make a big blunder dropping this cube. I know this one, yeah, the 4-3 the can be hard to find the right split after the 6-3 split, yes. but uh, he finds the correct play. This one is funny. I think he got to make the five point here. Yes, uh, it's better. Yeah. It's better because otherwise you're going to leave a direct shot. I would assume so, yeah. yeah. 5-2, that makes the 4. Yeah, continue developing. Yeah, I, I guess he can look at hitting 2, but uh, it doesn't seem just as productive. Yeah, uh, oh, he's going to look at it, interesting. Yeah, It, it looks... doesn't seem like the right idea. Yeah. No. I don't think so. I think making the four is a better play, but I mean, it is reasonable, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. If you don't hit, you give your opponent a chance to, to just come out and make an anger. But, uh, okay, it's really oh, close. Oh, look at this. Yeah, it is yeah. close, it is close. Actually, That's I... That's really I good instincts to know that, yeah. Yes, and and after he, look, after he looked at it, I kind of warmed up uh, towards the double hitting play, but I think I would still end up making the four point here. Yeah. Okay. I don't hate it. It's just, I don't know, the four points a very good asset. You know, I would just make it, this is not the game you want to play even when it works, kind of. But yeah. it, it, it does have a lot of tactical advantage for one roll. Yeah, so. that's that's one of them. Let's see what he can follow up with here. If there's a hit, hit and cover number, no, that's not. But at least it's yeah. continuing the blitz. Still pretty good. Mm -hmm. He's still a slight underdog, actually. It goes to show how strong the five point is. That Mochi I wonder is still, if the, wow, what a... I think he's got to make the four point here, right? Offensive, and you don't even bother with the checker on the four? It's either the double hit or the four. I think it's just the four point. The yeah. Making the rack. Feels like it. But that's, um, it could, I wonder how much the score plays into that, that play too, the double hit. If he can just do that because he gets more aggressive cubes in. Um, 
Yeah, yeah. Okay. So these plays, it's it's almost a blunder to hit two, but yeah. I think he'll find this. But yeah, it's yeah. just too strong a position. You already, yes. you know, like I guess there a few like what like an entering something in a three is going to cover that blot, but it's going to be tough for him to do something about that this roll anyway. Yes, right? good Without move. By, good move by Mochi. You want to punish yeah. the impurity with the prime structure. That's the thing, yeah. and the, the anger on the twenty-three point is really, really nice. Oh, this is a now pop. even leading. I mean, this must be a double. I yeah, think. I, yeah. I don't think he can take this cube. I'm thinking about yeah. It, it can't be too good. I, I I think this is a double and a pass. Mm -hmm. I I'm not sure about the take pass. That's how I know that it's a double according to Wolsey's law of cube yeah. theory. If you're not sure whether your opponent has a double, a take or pass, you should double, and that's the case here. You might think that Hideaki has more Vigan taking in, in having the racing lead, but when it's uh, when that racing lead is largely because of the two checkers buried to the ace on the point there, that kind of goes away. Um, and the the two point anchor threatening all those spots, yeah. I mean, he's so likely to send more back and get that. It just it looks pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. It, it is a big pass as we see here from the engine. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a huge pass actually. Um, Either Mochi is thinking about whether it's too good or not, just making sure that he's not making a mistake, or he could be making a little poker face here and trying to bluff Hideaki yeah. into thinking that maybe this position is worthwhile a take. No! Well, this is interesting, though. Given, like, looking at the numbers, I, I, I wonder if that position is too good for, for normal scores. Um, I don't it, think it, so. It looked like it would be. It's just so bad. Now it's, it's, it's only 0 .07 wrong not to send it, right? Like, that's how close to too good it is already. Um, yeah. So I think it's a pretty reasonable decision. Those are very tight positions to figure out. I, don't, I just don't see how it was too good, you know? Um, well, it was almost there. It was only 0 .07 off it, so yeah, <laughs> the that's, bot that, it. That's a big margin for uh, the best play in the world, you know? We're not yeah. talking about a, a, any other... Grandmaster, we're talking about the number one player in the world. This um, is how the game goes a lot of the time too, right? Four checkers back, the ace point, no other point. Like, you can see, you do kind of want to play this. Uh, yeah, he's in a really, really good position now, Mochi. It's difficult to see how you could even lose this game. Uh, mm -hmm. Four, four back checkers on the twenty-four point for Hideaki and his own ace point mate. It's looking pretty close to hopeless. Well, this is a fun play that he actually has to find here. Yeah, you know, it's one of those positions where it, you can't, it's so difficult to see how you can win it, so, but you still got to make good plays. So yeah. try to make the best out of it. And this just must come in. 13-7, uh, what is that play? Doesn't really matter. Yes. Does yeah, it's interesting. Matter. Okay, so that um, covers hmm. something. It's a little bit of something. Yeah. I guess he likes covering, but I feel like he'd probably rather get some checkers off the 24 here. Yeah, he does. He, he needs to roll aces and deuces to get going. This is confusing. Like, it's pretty natural just to do this play, but it's not taking full advantage of, yeah. of the control you have of this game. You exactly. almost want to be back there for the contact. Yeah. Oh, 2-6, that's oh. perfect. But Mochi's 1-6 uh, yeah. there is, is kind of uh, relieving pressure from the, yeah. from the, from the what do you call it, the boiler pressure cooker. Yeah, no. You know, <laughs> what do you call those things that cooks the water? Uh, yeah, I yeah, think he's... the boiler pressure cooker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's letting off steam, you know, he should just be squeezing and yeah. letting him crunch into him and capturing even more checkers and try to win a backgammon. Hmm. This keeps rolling forward a little bit awkward, but uh, easy enough. Wow, is he going to find a slot here? That's, oh. that's, I guess, but I just, I wouldn't be inclined to do it. You'd rather no. hit, right? It's it's usually it's not the right idea to slot in positions like this, but this ha he happens to be in such a great shape in terms of priming that he can actually just do it, and it doesn't mm -hmm. really matter. Yeah, just play absolutely efficient. And there's also this thing about fishing for more checkers if he mm -hmm. gets hit, mm -hmm. just because of the weakness of Hideaki's impure inner board. Oh, he's just destroying him now. Mm -hmm. We're coasting home to yes. four points or maybe five. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it could be a BG. How much BG? I guess um, Hideaki's front position is fairly live, though. I don't think he's going to crunch before Mochi comes in and starts bearing um, off. So well, he's got that small thing going for him, but it's close. Yeah, it's pretty close because usually mm -hmm. when you're down 80 pips, you would have sufficient timing. But it, timing is not just a function of the race. It's also a function of how much mobility you have. So when you've got four checkers trapped on the yeah. ace point, 
you only got 11 checkers left to move so that decreases your mobility and speeds up your crunch so yeah. it is going to be pretty tight here for Hideaki he doesn't want to roll any high numbers now he just want to roll small as possible Mochi misses another little tactic there of leaving a checker on the midpoint just because he can like it doesn't do Hideaki any good to hit it so why not you know limit how how pure he can play yeah. by keeping a checker out there just a little detail uh yeah. goes to the same theme of you he can he can just squeeze his opponent here but mm -hmm. he's kind of letting him off the hook a little bit too easy mm -hmm. and i mean with the made ace already there's no counter prime potential or anything like that with that single checker you know yeah. it's just not time to worry about that exactly i'm not even sure that uh, hideaki was going to hit if he rolled an ace he probably wouldn't actually yeah. i don't <laughs> think so i think he's just forced to play clean off his midpoint instead of spread out yes. like he did so and look at yeah. this little tactical detail. Mochi plays eight to seven. I think that's a, yes, that's it's actually good here uh, with the eight to seven. Usually for flexibility, it's not a good place to put it, but it's good mm -hmm. when you're trying to slow down your crunch, because yeah. then you're, he's trying to get his opponent to crunch before him. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is pretty perfect looking. Yes, he gets the optimal bad checker distribution. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And actually, the best roll Mochi could roll now would be double sixes because that's essentially rolling zeros, and he doesn't have to move for one. I think he should. Should he just clear here, or should he keep the prime? Okay, yeah, he's gonna have a look at it. It's uh, too ugly. Yeah, I, wow, it's way closer than I would have thought. But yeah, I can't imagine close. putting spares deep just for. It's close trying because to time it, but I get it. Yeah. Yeah, you're giving your opponent some a couple of bad numbers uh, doing so. And yeah. you're giving yourself a chance to roll the double six again next time, or six one that only moves one pip. So uh, you do get your opponent to crunch more often mm. when you when you do that other play. Uh, but of oh, what course, is he doing? He had the perfect uh, Michi Mountain, and then he undoes it. I would have thought, yeah, well, you got to take off. That's like the even perfecter Mountain after that. It's just, I don't. I hope Michi's not watching this one. I think he'll be very disappointed <laughs> if he doesn't just make the pretty play, you know? Yeah, and the, the play, yeah, this is, and that's the play that uh, Nick was talking yeah. about. And it's yeah. perfect bear off uh, distribution. It's the optimal structure. He's got the wave structure w rolling in from the yeah, rear. Yeah, that's clear, yep. There yeah, that's nice. And against an ace point anger, you really want to clear from the rear. You don't need to be as aggressive bearing off checkers as, as you uh, as you have to be against other angers. You mm -hmm. need to clear from the rear because the ace point game is dangerous. Yeah. It generates a lot of shots. And Hideaki has really salvaged quite a bit out of this position. Um, yeah. It's very playable. He's still going to win a decent amount of games from here. He managed to not lose all those. Yeah and uh, decrease the backgammon rates as well. The backgammon rate was above 6% at some point. Now we're down mm -hmm. to 2.8% backgammons. I think he should just, yes, exactly. That's the gammon saving play here. He gets the, the one crossover without wasting any pips. Play Very sharp. This. I'm always tempted to think about just slotting that next point and preparing to win the game, but it's just better to spend the pips for getting inside. You can still yes. like save the gammon naturally. So Exactly. Uh, playing sure. eight to two here with a six, it's simply wasting four pips yeah. that you could have spent uh, saving a gammon other places on the board. Look at that! It's getting kind of close because he's running out of yes. time to do that before yeah. he needs to run off his he, anchor. He just wasted one pip, but uh, he has to keep his ace point now. So it was a good play from Hideaki. Yeah. And, and I think with this distribution, he would not want to leave on a six. I'm not sure though. It's it's tricky because you're getting into that territory where you feel like you can save the natural gammon. Yes. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, it is tricky, Nick. I agree. Uh, yeah, he could exactly. He could save the the running gammon by just running. But Mochi is so well distributed here, and mm -hmm. his small numbers make the ace point. And okay, that worked so out well. That worked out well for Hideaki. Now he has. Yeah. Now he can stay, and yep. he can even. We could even see a coup class coup classic coming up here. If Mochi manages to take off his four back checkers here, or his four rear checkers, okay, Ooh, we didn't. That's a great, great yeah. finisher for Mochi. Ex perfect, perfect roll. Wow. Okay. Oh, nice. That's gonna save a lot of gammons. Definitely. He sure wasn't too sad about that roll, Hideaki. Yeah, that should do it. Wow, survived it. So I guess he'll get uh, get a cube decision in for both of them here. I don't think Mochi's gonna cube because then he's no. okay. He's just gonna resign a single. That's fair play because yeah. if Mochi, <laughs> he's not gonna cube because then he's giving Hideaki a free decision.
Improve your backgammon skills by reading the best books on the market. Available on Amazon. Links in the description below. Yeah. <laughs> so it doesn't count it as a decision for him since it's like uh, break even. Is that how that works? Uh, it like doesn't matter. He wins either way, so he gains zero. So it might not be a decision for no, Mochi. Because, yeah. yeah, for Mochi it doesn't matter because it's yeah. he's a hundred percent to win either way. Uh, for yeah. Hideaki it does matter because take pass decisions always count as a sure. decision. <laughs> yeah. All right, four away, seven away. This is a fun score. And leading, yeah, you need to switch to the split. He's gotten this wrong before, though, and played the two down play in spots where he's supposed to switch to the switch, but he, he finds it this time. Actually, Probably you know saw what? that in his matches reviewing them. Yeah, yeah, Mochi's style is to play two down. I've seen him play two down in match scores where he's ahead in the match. So mm. uh, maybe he's... Uh, he, I think he's got a lot of respect for Hideaki's play, and now he's simply yeah. just trying to play the computer play. What a confusing play that is. And okay, he finds the best of the two. I'm not sure I knew that response, honestly. Oh yeah, I knew um, it. I knew it. Yeah. And so did Hideaki. Yeah. Um, especially when you're down, I think it's uh, even even more important. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. the double hit. Worth to have a look, but probably just going to be 13 oh, yeah. to 8. With, with the two made, you don't really care about having the 8. So there's a lot. But I mean, you get the extra checker in the zone. You have less blots. So all those things are nice about it. Um, but yeah, it's got more merit than usual. That's fair. Um, okay, he comes. Uh, to his it doesn't senses. show up though. Okay. Yeah. yeah, he comes to his senses. It's it. He's lacking ammunition to make such a blitzy play, so it's much yeah. better to just remake the eight point here. Even though you you pointed out it's not part of the prime, uh, yeah. it's still a valuable uh, outfield point. Blocks. These it's... are always tricky. I kind of want to unstack. I think with all my structure instead of switching eight to five. Um, you know, yeah. the question is, are the eight and the three together better than the better than the five? Yes, I that's think... how you, you have to evaluate. And I, I, I think so. I mean, these play nice together. Yeah, yeah. it's close. Okay, though. Look how close, close that it's is. Super yeah, close. yes. I wasn't sure here either, to be honest. Yeah. I think I'm leaning towards the six to three just because mm -hmm. it's more often right than not. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, the, the times where eight to five becomes correct in the opening game, is often when uh, when your opponent has a, an extraordinary deep position or a impure position, so mm. your purity goes up in value. Um, I see. But yeah, he, he finds the best play yeah. here according to the board. But it's super close. It's, it's, it's really just developed so nice and everything too. I, I like this play. Yeah, me too. And actually, in gammonish positions, Mochi, Mochi shouldn't hold back in in terms yeah. of cube strategy because his gammons so, can go straight to goal. But is this is, is a bit I don't think so. He's still got an ace point an anchor, and he's not really primed yet. Um, he does have that potential third back, but, but the, I think it's a little... And look at that. Yeah, it is it enough. Is, okay. It is a double. Yeah, because, I mean, two checkers on the 24 point. That's a pretty Ooh, big Oh, this piece. is a tough decision here, Oh, too. yeah. What about just I making guess, the 20 point? Just making the right. golden point and winning the game easily. That's so huge. At a, you would feel that way at a leading score, but you still want to win gammons? Jeez, I, I don't know. I think this, this is the is play. This is confusing. Nick. Oh, yes. Ooh. It is the play. Yeah. No, 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 Mochi, it's the wrong idea. Oh, Mochi, please move back. And this is another one where I think, well, actually, I can't tell by those numbers exactly, but this could be right for money. No, I think it just wins too much, the anchor. I think it wins too much and, and it loses less gammon. Oh, Mochi, that's a big yeah. one. And there's also the problem that the cube is in the middle and he's playing the volatile play and putting yeah. a third checker back. He's actually giving more uh, flexibility it... to make an anchor. And now it's just a huge pass. If it's yeah, he's just good. lost his market by too much, so he doesn't get full value out of his play. Is right? it too good? Uh, I don't think it can't be too good. I don't think it feels way too early for that. With only one more board point, right? But I don't know. Hideaki um, has a really, really poor position. Oh, look how close this is too. Yeah. This is almost too good as well. And maybe plus plus will change that. It's, but uh, yeah, it's... easy pass. Oh, Mochi didn't play this game well. He missed a cube and then he misplayed uh, two one. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, Mochi, I'm surprised he didn't find that 2-1 at least. The cube yeah. can be, okay, maybe he finds the cube most of the time. But in this case, he didn't. Uh, but it was a close decision. But the 2-1, I felt like it was a clear play, to be honest. We're ready. Are you? Melbourne Backgammon International. Online from February the 1st. See you there. This mm. idea of... Uh, of hitting the third checker when you, your opponent got, is getting primed with two checkers on the 24 point, it actually helps his flexibility with the back checkers. It makes it easier mm. to make an advanced anchor. Very true. Oh, and he makes a aggressive 5-1 score play, but again, oh, I think we saw that early in the match too, that it's just not right. 
That's no, I'm nice. almost regardless. Just yeah. supposed to split with the one. But Hideaki is way, way ahead now in the PR. Mochi needs to start playing better so he can see if he can get a two-pointer here. Otherwise, it looks as if it's going to be a 1-1. One -one. Mochi leading 4-0 in the score and Hideaki leading significantly in the PR race. Well, I can't believe how close these are. I, this looks very natural to me. I guess you don't like the, how many double hits there are, but um, it kind of double covers your bar point checker. So you're going to enter and hit a lot of the time. I agree. Ooh, what a Ooh. shot. What a shot. How do you play, do you this play one? it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you could just make you could just make the the four point, but I think hitting outside is nah, maybe I'm just making the four. I'm tempted to make the four point because yeah. it prevents the anchor. It you know, but here anchor. we go. Okay, no no no. Okay. Hitting on the seven and making the five is definitely better. And now we're thinking about the ace. So Mochi is on the comp totally right track here. And yeah. uh, this is a little bit too big, I think. Oh, it's just 13 milli points. So it's no, just I think, slightly what, better to play safe. Mm, I see. Just lift it and put a yeah. spare on there. Yes. He's even going to find that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to risk Very the race here. Point. It is quite a uh, quite a few shots you leave. It's 1, 4, 2, 4, 3, 4, 2, 6, 3, mm. 5, and double 4. So it's 11 shots that you leave with the other play. So well played, Mochi. Really, really well played. Yeah, I just noticed as well how many shots, so 2-5 included, we're just going to make the bar point anchor anyway, if he if he just made the four. I was thinking it would yeah. prevent more anchors, but it's, there's just too many that make that bar point, I think. So that makes more sense now that I see it. Yeah, that's actually right. The four point was weak. We all, I already yeah. ruled that one out. I was counting the shot numbers between the second best play and this mm -hmm. play. Uh, great shot here. That's Mochi nice. just dominating this position again. Uh-huh. So he's got to, I mean, he's unlikely to win the PR point in this match unless it gets extended quite a bit. Um, but, you know, winning the game is worth something for sure. He can at least even out the day. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. What do we do with this? So he's down in the ro race. He wants to maintain contact. Um, oof, this yes. is just such a junk position. I guess this is the best he can do is unstack, huh? Yeah, I think so too. I mean, it's not that bad to build an inner port point. Now that you're ha you have a loose position on on with your back checkers, yeah. then it's nice to have a little bit of of uh, consolidated stability on your own side of the board. It's so impure though. I think I would have found the second best play at twenty one to fifteen and eight to four and yeah. hope to make a better point. I wouldn't blame I you. I kind of like the look of that. Yeah. I wouldn't blame you. Oh yeah, that's a hit. That's a hit. Good play from Hideaki. That's a good shot. Yeah. Now he's glad that he made the the pointing play. Yes. This is a beautiful board, Nick. I'm still admiring this earth board. <laughs> yeah, it looks I nice like to play on. It, I like the earth board even more than I like the Neptune. This is my style of board. These are some confusing plays, too. Look at this, Ooh, and he just does that like lightning play. fast. Really, yeah. really good play. Impressive. Yeah. I think we're going to have a 16 point versus 17 point anchor here now, right? Is Could that be it? Oh, I mean, there's a couple of plays here. He could switch to the 16 point. Yes, he could also just jump out with both checkers from 20 to 16. But that leaves, him with, a, that leaves yeah. him with a stack on the midpoint. This is the play that I first saw. Maybe this, yeah, the development is too important with uh, the stack of five. But I really hate leaving the blitz open. Yeah, this and this, this play. That, yeah. Oh, yeah, this is the best play. Good play. Yeah, he took a good play, Mochi. Wow. Yeah, so I guess it's still too important to stay on the golden point. It's too yeah. valuable. Don't give it up yeah. yet. With the board point, makes a big difference. Yes. And this nine point is a good asset as well. You get to unstack the, the mid and you build the priming point on your nine this point. It's been a really tricky kind of mutual holding game so far. There's a lot of interesting decisions in this one. Yeah. The good cleanup. It's resolving into something pretty simple here. Yes. Um, I don't think it's going to be too challenging, but I, I really... <laughs> The the seventeen point anchor just plays so much different than any other anchor that it's uh, I get tricked in these a lot. So I can still see some interesting decisions coming here. I agree. The mutual holding games are probably the least eventful position types, but there's definitely a lot of skill that you need mm -hmm. to apply here. Okay, six one. That's an easy one to play. That just plays nice and efficient, slotting the four point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, that puts a spare in the six. That's a pretty nice shot. That is actually pretty nice. Two one, also pretty easy to play. And it's really unfortunate for Hideaki in this game that he's not going to get to use, you know, that that trailing cube efficiency 
probably at all. It just doesn't change very much yes. when you're playing like non-volatile games like this. That's why it's so strong to get an advanced anchor on the 20 or the 21 point uh, yes. when you're leading in the match. Mm -hmm. Just take out so much gammon and volatility from the position. It's interesting. I wonder, I just see the simple play right away, but I guess clearing the nine is an option. I wonder what he's considering, if that's the play or not. I think that's the play, yeah. Uh, yeah. He was considering. Well, he thought about it. He Let's thought about play it, but he wasn't really uh, in any doubt, mm -hmm. which he... This looks like you just... Okay, interesting play there. I would just probably play 8-3, to three, um, but there's some other inside board options. Okay, leading the race, I guess he wants to... Just wants to play for that right now. He's yeah. well outboarded. Yeah. I mean, this is uh, here. He saves an eight and or that's a spare checker on the six and eight point, which is nice because he's like up in the race. I like the play six to one. Six to one is interesting because six to one is actually the most racing efficient of the moves mm -hmm. because you put a checker on a on an open point in your inner board, which helps you in, in terms of a pure race. Uh, but obviously, it's, it decreases its flexibility. Uh, so here's just three different plays. Each of them got their own little thing going on, but it doesn't really matter yeah. too much which one he chooses. Right. He picks the best one, though. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> uh, now uh, we're tempted to find some extra contact, I guess, but none of the checkers are dead, so I don't think it makes any sense to leave the anchor here, especially at the score, so we must just give up the nine. I think so, I think yeah. so. And, and Hideagi is pretty stripped. Uh, well, that is, is an interesting play, B. Now that I see it, it's still like pure enough, but... I don't know. Yeah. It's close. Uh, okay, it's close. I, I I had a strong preference for break, breaking the nine point here, like Mochi, because of Hideaki is is kind of running out of timing here. But I mean, it it was also an efficient play, and Mochi had a look at it, <laughs> and it was actually yep. very close. Okay, this is so not time to volunteer. Wait till no. Mochi might have to give he some away on some six. problem rolls. Oh, yep, there's a six. Does. Oh, now he can probably just run from the anchor though. Yeah, I like this. It's the dragon uh, with the tail. Yeah, <laughs> and it's always indicated right. as soon as your opponent has a dead checker behind you like that's this, and true. you have a huge board advantage. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's usually mm -hmm. the 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 giveaway, now, the dead checkers here. Yeah, um, now that he left the attack, Hideaki feels like he has to consider sending a cube. Um, but of course, it's just the the attack threat just isn't there with the no. board structure he's got. That three deuce ace and six, it's open four and five is too much. Wow. Um, yeah. Okay, it, I think he was simply just lose your market. <laughs> he lost his. I think he was just counting the race. To be honest. Um, yeah. Obviously, the race is so important here. And this is unless I guess Mochi... this is still kind of nice to claim when he doesn't enter or when he does really. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I think he. Yeah. Got, I think he's. No wait. Yeah. Can he? He it's can, an easy pass, I, an easy I, pass. especially at the score. There's it, definitely gammons here. There is gammons. I think there's 19% gammons here, and I think maybe mm -hmm. it's too good because what? it's very, very few sequences that makes him lose the cube. It's yeah. literally if Mochi or if Hideaki clears his 17 point and then Mochi rolls a 4 5 from the bar that hits him right back or something like this. Everything yeah. else, he's got a perfectly efficient cube next time. Uh, in yeah. case the worst thing happens, so I think it's too good to double. Okay. Oh, right. very break even, huh? Okay, okay, okay. So it's close. Super close. It's very close. Yeah. Yeah, that's a tough one. It just uh, the open four just feels like there's a lot of life in the position with the dead checker behind it. It's gonna be very hard to make it, right? It's not likely that that Hideaki is gonna solve that problem, so it's just gonna feel stressful the whole way home. Makes it feel like a volatile game. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it does give life all the way until the end, but uh, my thinking was just that it's it's so few sequences that actually makes you lose your cube next time. And that's why maybe we can just take almost like a free roll here. But it's not quite yeah. free, and that's why it is a double yeah. and not right. too good to double. Super close. How about double fives? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. That's probably why it isn't too good. That's yeah, a good point. Thanks. Probably some interesting ones like double that. fives is really is. annoying. Imagine yeah. double fives and then uh, Mochi enters with a six. Then he's yeah, like, a, perfect. That's all it takes, right? You've got nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect holding <laughs> game position for Mochi. <laughs> okay, he takes his time, Hideaki. Do you think we're going to see the fan coming out, Nick? <laughs> It seems like the spot for it. Yeah, this is this is a really tough decision, though. I mean, it, this makes a lot of sense to spend a lot of time on. Um, it's just not something that comes up a lot for all the reasons that we stated, right? Like you've got a bunch of great reasons for playing on. 
I pointed out some difficulties and some some fear factor in that, and it's just going to be hard for him to figure out what what the right play is here, yes. right? Like he's just got to think about a lot of different sequences. And I, I do think he sees that he needs to come off the 17 immediately, almost no matter what he rolls. Um, if he made the mistake of clearing the 10, then he's, you know, that could be a real problem position here too, right? Like that's that's got to be the last one to go. Yeah. But it just, yeah, it feels scary. It feels very scary. It's nice. Okay, so there, there is Eight the cube. Claims, yeah. and, and of course, Mochi's going to pass. Yeah. Well, I guess Mochi wasn't thinking about how clear of a drop this was for him, or yeah, what's he doing oh, now? Okay, okay, okay. He is passing. He had some time to think about it. Yeah, he's <laughs> dropping. Hi, everyone. This is Mochi. Let's play Japan Open this May. Come get us. Hideaki is down to 3 minutes and 39 seconds and Mochi is down to 5 minutes on the clock. So it should... Yeah, they could easily get into one of those fun matches again, huh? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it should be enough uh, on the clock, but you never know, you know? So, yeah. Let's see. Again, an, an offensive opening play from Hideaki. And with That's... the 2-1, it's clearly indicated even, you know, at yeah. even scores, right? So yes. no surprise there. Um, that's a good start, though. I guess making a point is oh, a good yes. response. He's going to make the 11 with it. Why not? Great start. Yeah, he's a 55% favorite here, Hideaki. So Six that's... away, three away. He's got to be very aggressive, too. So um, I don't think this is anything with them both having anchors and mochi developing, but um, it's a little bit better for him, so it's, yes. it's going to be scary. Yeah, I guess the... The three. That's a weird one because the eight's probably a better point than the three. But what else do you have? I think the three is a, a little bit better point than the eight. But you're right that you're giving up the eight, so it it wasn't yeah. totally obvious. I think the giveaway was that he didn't really have any other good place because mm -hmm. he would be stripping his mid point too early and he would be front loading a little bit too much with playing thirteen to five. So it's just is, natural. Oh. Yeah. Ah, four three. I thought it was uh, for Mochi. <laughs> Sorry. It's going to be very difficult for Mochi to split in this game now, which is exactly what Hideaki wants. They've developed way too much to go for things like that. So, um, I like this yeah. game for him a lot at the score. Mochi wants nice. a double ace or double four here or double six. Six yeah. one is tricky. So, do you play thirteen to six or do you play two from the rear? I expect they. I don't think you want to split here. It looks like. I mean, you can go. For, why not go for the blitz too? If he doesn't roll a four, you've just got a clear attacking game I, plan. I'm leaning towards this play. Maybe I'm not sure. I mean, Mochi is ahead in the race with eight pips after the move. That clearly yeah. indicates that he should play the back checkers and not get primed. But it is a big play to do it. Okay, okay. We see it's a clear play here. Yeah, oh, I it was... looks like way too much. I mean, look at that difference in gammons too. Yeah. Like you're not under threat yet, and you're still got your t opponent under a ton of like. What you have going for you is four point. Like you've made four points with your eight checkers, right? You just need more in the zone to pull off that obvious game plan. Yeah. Okay. Much is, I mean, I'm yeah. also looking at this play. I hope I find the best play here. I come to my senses and realize this is too big yeah, of a it... disadvantage. You're opening up for your opponent's blitz, and you fail to unstack your midpoint. And put that yeah. beautiful spare checker on the six point. But I can understand Mochi. It's one of those positions yeah. where even before the dice lands, like the good old uh, falafel uh, lesson mm -hmm. that he told me, like you you need to know where you where you want to move your checkers. Like your hand should go yeah. there even before the dice. And I think actually here it also goes to the midpoint because of the stack. So yes, that's exactly what I'm thinking. I'm just mm -hmm. made it, as soon as he rolled, I was looking what that does from the midpoint. It yeah. makes a spare on the six, so I'm happy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this Good is play. interesting. I guess uh, maybe a four loses. I don't think anything loses your market by enough here. I understand why he's thinking about it. I mean, a four is very strong, mm -hmm. clearly dominating the position. But I don't even know if Mochi has to drop after that at the score, you know? Yeah, and the fours um, are even duplicated. Look at four, two and six, right. four. And 4-1 yeah. even makes the 7 points so, so good. No, 4-1 makes yeah. the 20, but it could also make... So I don't think this Super is... Super close at the score, though. Look, out, look at this. Yeah, um, okay. Okay, plus plus makes it a bill bigger okay. margin. I guess that's also what I would probably estimate it to, like half a blunder to mm -hmm. double here. It's not quite there yet, you know? Yeah. Maybe if we had the rack instead of a, an open gap on the four point. This is probably a big part of that splitting play too. I think you would have a very probably sizable and clear double after it. Yeah. Um, and Mochi but, has the easiest decision in the world here. Yeah. Small error and of course we, yeah. I'm happy that he sent the cube now. It's probably pretty tough to take after this play. Mm -hmm at the score now Mochi needs to get the back checkers going okay there it is and what about the five is he coming out yes i think so interesting yeah, yeah. this yeah, was okay. one of the plays where the hand went over to the back checkers before the dice yeah. lands he found it quickly yeah 
This okay. is not the easiest play. Um, no, he needs to we can hit. hit. We can make the bar. We can make the two. Um, oh, we got to hit and play 11 to 5, yeah, I think. Yeah, I guess just... Oh, 11 to 5. Interesting. Why yeah. do we want to stay on the mid instead? Yeah, because um, it's fewer shots. That's yeah, too why. many sixes from the bar. Yeah, that's fair. Clearing up a block. The Duplicates pure... with the entering ones, too. Yeah. Yes, it, this is just 4-5, four, 4-1, four, one, 2 one, and double one. So it's seven shots. Mm. The other, the big play, slotting the seven point. Ooh, mm -hmm. that's simply Ooh. too many shots. Okay, so Hideaki is in a great spot now. Lots of gammons here. This oh, yes. appears to make a point. Yeah, there uh -huh. we go. Ooh, he's in a good position. Mochi needs to survive the blitz here. And I think Hideaki's PR is down to a 1.5 now. 1.48. No. Oh. Great performance. He could end up taking that two points to start off the he day could. pretty easily. He could. If he wants a gammon here. Yeah. You've got to keep going for the blitz and hit. Yes. Yeah, okay. Good. And Mochi is desperate to roll an ace now. Or a double yeah. five. He's got and the work's out. not over if he rolls the ace, right? True. It just kind of keeps him alive, Ooh, and that's about it. That's a huge ace. Yeah. Huge, huge, huge ace. And oh, nice. With a dance, oh. he could get in big trouble here now, yes. too. Mochi could end up turning this match around. Wow. Oh, nice. Yeah. You and now it, Mochi, <laughs> probably a favorite to win a gammon in, in the match on this, oh, on this yes. uh, game. He could win a G here. Yeah. This is going to be wow. not a position that he can cube until they're much closer to the end, though. Especially yeah. with the checker back and some winning chances and just way too many gammons to oh, play yes. for. Oh, yes. It would be, yeah. it's nowhere near cube yet. <laughs> yeah. You need, uh, Hideaki needs 11% uh, to take a potential recube here because he would be oh. essentially re recubing for the match. Wow, what a turnaround. Yeah, huge turnaround. It was looking What's so the priority? good. I really like the 9 to 7. That seems like it's a point you want to make and it attacks the ace if he enters there. Well, that's nice. strong. Nice. I like it as well. Cool play. Yeah. Even making just making the seven is also nice. Yeah, gives you a few sets that also make the ace when he comes in too. Great point. Um, yeah, any two seems fine. I don't see a strong reason to prefer something. No, I agree. And yeah, now we're just trying to get run our checkers around, I guess. You yes, know? I think he's gonna hit loose with a five here. I'm not sure if he's gonna hit loose with a six. I think it's worth it. You don't let is him it? just have a second anchor like this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's close. It's yeah. close. Um, Ensure so, just two around seems fine. Yeah. Yeah. So you're you're ba basically uh, starting the battle uh, yeah. to not let him have a back game position. Look at that. That's, oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, is this a banana split? No, it's not. What a I, joker! It's not a banana split. What a <laughs> and joker! And the reason, wow. The only reason I think those plays were close was because of the score, or it could be oh, the play on today. Oh, this. what a shot back! Oh, you he's. Oh yeah, he's thinking about it. I mean, I think. Oh wow! He's... Actually, the bar is really strong with those three checkers on the twenty-four. That's fascinating. Exactly, but I think shouldn't you just hit here? It's even. I mean, I think you need to hit. You still got four checkers. I. Oof, I he's convincing me with this. It's nice to have him on the roof. There's so much more play oh. from the five two five six one two one six all hit back, and yeah. he's got blots five, everywhere. Two, five six one, at the six, score, it sucks. Five, so maybe. It, and what, what goes one. wrong if he just blocks it, right? Like yeah. now Hideaki has to roll fours to step up to the anchor and then leave. Like it's a long game if you just make the yeah. bar. So I'm not, okay, okay. Okay, this is better. I'm, I'm counting nine shots uh, after the hitting play here. So there's nine shots with double aces included. After this play, uh, there's so many more shots here. All the fly shots blocks. in the outfield. That's actually with the, the part yeah. that I wasn't looking at are exactly. the sevens and eights out there. I think it is too much. It's, it's too gonna, much. Nine shots yeah. is not a whole lot. Three out of four times. He's this is really tempting, though. It really yeah. does hinder the mobility of those checkers on the 24. Good play, okay, Mochi. Good play, good play, yeah. good, play good play. Oh, he's still going to think about it. He might pick it up still. <laughs> it's a tricky, it's a blunder potential move here, huh? Yeah. But so that, that hit on the ace, going back to that real quick, um, I saw that it, it was a giant jump in Gammons by doing so and not letting him make uh -huh. that anchor. Um, but at the score, the gammons aren't worth as much, right? Uh -huh. So it's it was relatively close where it looked like for money or normal scores, it would just basically like you're forfeiting 20% gammons by not doing it. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. yeah. It, of so. course, the score has a lot to say here. Yeah. Oof. Holding a cube. Oh, Mochi. He's having trouble talking himself into the just the obvious hit play, right? And it's probably something more natural at other scores and things like that. It's, wow, what a confusing position. Oh, yeah, it's tricky. Yeah. It's so tricky. And also, it's also mathematical here because he yeah. needs to 
Oh yeah, good, 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 Moji. This is the play, this is the play. Oh, yeah, dodged a bullet there. Neo yeah. from the Matrix style, <laughs> waving oh, back and forth. 1-4 is an interesting shot. That's a good play for Hideaki. Oh yeah, because of all the blots. Great play from Hideaki. He does it yeah. with it well, without even thinking. Well, that's the only play, but I'm oh. saying it's a good shot for him, right? And now oh, yeah. he has a lot of tactical opportunities yes. to kind of keep moving around here. Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> Hideaki's, this is great. Hideaki's back. I think yeah. he's a favorite now. Yeah, he's a 54% favorite. Oh, oh that's a four. Game. Huge four. <laughs> Yeah, how does either side finish this game? It just looks like it's going to go on forever now. Oh, that's a great shot again. Oh, Mochi yeah. needs to roll a four, and then the position will consolidate. Without the but four, he's... okay, if an ace, okay, okay. He's got forever to do it too, though, right? Like, I mean, Hideaki has a nine to hit loose kind of at best, and then he has to bring a checker around to cover it. Like, it's going to be tough to not get the four in this position. Uh, yeah, but now he's got one more builder now. He's going to hit loose with the three. Yeah. And a 10. No, oh, sorry, an 11. Uh, interesting that he goes for the mobility right away. I don't see that as clear. I think I want the checker. Yeah, the 15 uh, to 10 looks... I, I really like that. It's yeah. just I, I want to focus on trying to prevent that front anchor, I think. Okay. It was actually a borderline play, Nick. Uh, I yeah. like the way that you uh, saw that right away. Because I was I was thinking like Hideaki, that I want to get that uh, spare checker on the 24 into action. Uh, but uh, you were right. Uh, the, the other play was really good as well. Ha yeah, I don't increasing. know why it doesn't look that risky. Like, I guess it's kind of primed, but you're always, you know, you've got the sixes out. You're yeah. generally going to have the fours to step up to. It just doesn't seem urgent. Oh, yeah. And you have so much flexibility Ooh. with all those checkers on the 20. Yes. Now Mochi is an underdog to winning the fight of the, uh, yeah. maybe not. Uh, he needs to win the fight of the four point. Otherwise, it's almost game over. Oh, yeah. what's that, Mochi? 6-2. Yeah, and this is, this is about Ooh, and back to favorite to Gammon, I think, but uh, making a tough work of it anyway. And I guess the only thing you can really do is just link the blots up. It's it's awkward. It's not what you're thinking. But uh, uh, yeah, this just doesn't... A, another checker in the zone is actually very... You know, you don't get more numbers with it. You probably have more comfort. Oh, you, you do get 6-3, I think. 6-3, yeah. right? double-3. Yeah, but it's, it's still just better to have another one in range. I, yeah. Especially when you get hit on the four, you know? Yeah, when you get hit on the four, definitely. Uh, yeah. But he does have more covers here. Oh, there's the yeah. five. What a. There we go. Now we can get our game. back checkers moving. Interesting. I'm not sure what the point of the 16 to, or 13 to 11 over 20 to 18 would be. Um, lots of interesting technical plays here. Yeah, maybe um, something to do with the double aces. I don't know. So, yeah, I'm kind of tempted to slot the bar here too, because why not? It's just a place you'd like a checker and then start working him toward it, but this seems fine. I think yeah, everything is good. Slotting the cool. bar is a little bit disconnecting, but of course it's, it's still perfectly valid. That is what you want to do. Uh, yeah. Or maybe it depends how long uh, Mochi will stay on the bar, Ooh. because he doesn't really need the to make the seven point to win this game. Actually, the seven point can become a liability. If uh, As soon as he rolls an ace, I think he'd yeah. rather have it, though. You yeah. Know? Um. Let's yeah. See. So we're gonna. I think he's gonna. Yeah, make I think it here. you make it. Yeah. Yeah. You make it. Just... You make it. The, the thing is that as so, as long as you have back checkers who needs to get around the board, then the seven yeah. point is a great asset. If the back Look checkers off. already had full freedom, then you don't need the seven point. What was Look this? Look at this. Just to make sure that he doesn't like uh -huh. roll any super anti jokers, he goes with this clever play. I like, I like it, it actually. Yeah. 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 Looks it, good. It's cool. Because now if shots. Mochi enters on the ace, he's gonna have a ton of opportunities to make it and. Yeah. But if he doesn't, he doesn't have to make it now and doesn't yes. have to worry about clearing it. That's uh, very clever. Super I'll be interested clever. to see what Plus Plus says about that, if yeah. that's uh, ideal. And I don't Hideaki, think he's going to make yeah. it now. I think he's just going to move 7 to 5 here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I suppose. Okay. Now, I would, I mean, again, we're in this situation now where if he rolls an ace, you know, Moshi's going to be in a, a big rush to roll sixes and not crunch his position. That's true. Think, you're right. You're right. There is yeah. some, uh, okay, he does go for the clearing play, which is the idea if if uh, mm -hmm. Mochi had better timing. But I think Nick uh, correctly pointed out that Mochi's does, timing is not perfectly fine. He could yeah. crunch if uh, Hideaki made a prime here. Well, I'm never finding 9-3 to three here. What is that play? <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, the other thing I see about it, too... Was he gonna? Oh, the the spare on the five is pretty nice though. So it's yeah. it, it's like he had such a good secondary. 
How did why? I, this is awesome that he found the best play, wow, but I, yeah. really, I don't understand. Uh, like, really, I guess maybe it gets you off at sixes or five. No, sixes still are. Wow, why is why would that be the favorite bot play? And then why did he find it? That's yeah, that's incredible. You create the inner gap, but the inner gap is actually an illusion because you're gonna close that inner gap on almost every single roll you make. Maybe it's this six one difference that you can't just say, jump out with six one. Complicated the hell out of this roll. I mean, if that was it though, I mean, maybe you just hit the bar. But and look at this is a small error to do too. Yes. So okay. Okay. And yeah. I guess I, I don't know why you would leave the ace to six. Now seven to yeah. three makes sense to me. You do um, not want but your distribution's one, getting bad. Yeah, yes. it's tough. But if he can just fill out the inner gap, uh, Hideaki, on the four point, then it's no problem at all. And he can here, but then he has to leave a, a six <laughs> one. So what about eight to four and five to two? I that yeah. looks really weird to me. I'm that surprised solves the inner gap. Favorite, but uh, just bringing two checkers in seems pretty natural to me. This is a little bit too staggy. That's not too I guess flexible. it does. It solves the inner gap at the expense of putting a checker on the two, though, which is like the not the thing you want to do. Right? Uh, I don't think it's that bad to have a single spare checker on the deuce against the ace point. Uh, well, you you don't want any there because they're not leaving until the end of the game, basically, in general, right? But um, it's just so easy for it to get stacked up there and you get stuck with them there. Yeah. Yeah. This. So there you go. Okay. Yes. I, I don't think you need to even up on the outside. So this is a good example of that, right? The five to two is probably a sizable mistake. Yeah, but there's also a significant difference when you have the first spare check on the deuce and then the second spare check on the deuce. So you get a four stack on the deuce against the ace point. That's fair. Yeah. Okay, that's gonna clear, I yeah. guess. Oh, it doesn't look great though. Okay. Hideaki is playing really, really well. We got it. Yeah. yeah one point six so far, and Mochi is down to a three point one. Yeah, he's rolling know. pretty awkward though. This is uh, Ooh, looks very likely shot. to leave a lot of shots before the game's oh, over. Wow, yeah. Mochi it's has only the three. first one. Wow, he makes the three. Okay, Mochi is pretty good at hitting those late game shots. I think you got to go for it with fifteen to ten, right? I agree. I yeah. agree. Maximize your covers, your builders. He's only got a three point board. It's only double fives that really gets double hit. Um, Bring that checker down, Mochi. Yeah. It's fifteen to ten. What what other play is he con contemplating here? That play? Something. No, no, that's a big yeah. one. This still gets hit on double fives. Actually, is the interesting yes. thing too, right? At like no gain, I guess double aces play a little oh, better. But I'm not sure. That was a big one, about. Mochi. Why why would he? Pl what was the what's the purpose? I mean, why was he scared? All I can play? think of is double ones. If he's thinking about being attacked there. Um, so that was really weird. weird one, though. There was so much gain and almost l literally no risk. This is interesting. He's already <laughs> thinking about it. He's only three checkers off, um, yeah. so he's too shy of of having like the perfect distribution. To, yeah, this mm -hmm. is. I wonder. He's probably he's yeah past uh, money pass. Oh yes, uh, way past, way 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 past. With only three checkers off, it's a huge money pass. And as I mean, he's gonna get some cube actions here. Uh, yeah. Cube action decisions. That's a little bit of a weird play. He disconnects too much. Wow, look at this. But Mochi would have actually preferred to have better outfield control. Yeah. Oh, now he misses Ooh. the shot. Wow, what a. I guess you just have to link him here to sequence. avoid some gammons. Um, really? Oh, wow, I'm oh, wrong. No. Okay. No, Leave no, the because six. Then, you, you, then, you don't get any, then you don't get any shots on all the small numbers. That's a beautiful play. Exactly. Outfield control. Yeah. He gains the shots on almost all the numbers here. Like this one, for instance. Look at this. He yeah. gets the direct shot. That was a good play from Mochi. And here they are in time trouble now, too. Yeah. 5 4. Um, oh, it ooh. hits. It's the backdoor hit. Wow. Hard way. What is the take point at 1 away, 6 away? I can't it's remember 11 that off the top. 11%. Yeah, a little bit higher than 9, so I think they're still not in that. You've got to be at that, about to pass it, basically, to, to send the key to the score. Yeah. Uh, yeah, why not 15 to 9? And yeah, yes. this is what. Okay, you're supposed to slot the back. Interesting. It's, yeah, it's equally great. Oh, close. wow, look at this. Ooh, Shifting. what a shot. Shifting. Yeah, of course you got a hit, right? Yeah, there you go. And just oh, three wow, two. that's a great shot. He has 27.5% yeah. chance now. If he can roll a 6, uh, let's see what Mochi comes up with. Okay, 6-3. Yeah. That's also pretty good. He's going to go for outfield control. Reasonable. Yes, exactly. And now Hideaki really wants to roll that 6. Oh, he misses. Ooh. Now he's in trouble because now Mochi is yeah. going to hit with a 4, a 5, uh, an 8, and a 12. And once he hits, I think he's going to have a cube here. Oh, yeah. 
He does. Okay, yeah, he's going to have a cube. Uh, I th yeah, 9 to 7 is a scary play, but that's what Mochi tends to go for. Good, good play. Yeah, and, he, he does yeah. get the extra shots. And this is a double. This is a cube. Is I, it? How do you figure out if you should take or pass this, oh. though, as Hideaki? Like, this is just, these are the worst to me. Then you when need, you get pieces you need, trailing and you have to escape, like, how do you know when you're 9% or 13%? Like, I yeah. don't. Oh, Mochi's down to 45 seconds. Look at this, Nick. He's down yeah, to they four. got some real time trouble. Now it's a cube. Yes, yes, yes. There's the cube. They do not have enough time to. F oh my gosh! Yeah, and Hideaki <laughs> has just an impossible decision. Fortunately, he can't make a big <laughs> mistake with it. Um, hopefully, he realizes that at the score that it's like. I, I how, again, you just don't know though. Like, what if your winning chances are like sixteen percent instead? Then you're making just like a monstrous error yes. in passing this, right? Yeah, yeah. You so need somehow to you have to refine it down pretty close, and this is just no one estimates these positions in general. You, need you might to have know. some references. Yeah, 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 exactly. You need to know your references. If you read Cube like a boss, then you're gonna come up with a pretty educated guess here. Maybe you're not gonna oh, yeah. guess exactly 10.9 percent, but maybe you're gonna guess 12 percent or 9 percent, or you're gonna be in the ballpark uh, yeah. if you know your reference positions. We proudly announce that the UBC 2021 Contender Tournament will be held at the beautiful Coletta Hotel in Gibraltar. Schedule available soon. So, well, I feel relieved for Hideaki having an idea in that one and finding a pass and not just getting stuck because he only had a minute to figure it out, you know? And there's, yeah. there's huge blunder potential there. And it's not a very regular looking position on his side. I guess he filled in the gap and it's going to play pretty normal. It's going to be a speed board basically, but uh, mm -hmm. very interesting one. And now, again, they're playing at least a Crawford game with uh, very little clock time. I'm excited to see him yeah. <laughs> play down to under 10 seconds again. Yes, that is fun <laughs> to see. Uh, hopefully Mochi, okay, Mochi is stretching now. He knows that he has to act quick. He has to play intuitive backgammon, yeah. which we know he can, of course. The Hideaki getting a little unlucky, but otherwise still just playing lights out back in and oh, you know, yes. like he's done all tournament. It's really amazing stuff. He's so good. Um, yeah. What a player. What a player. Wow, how does he find this? I'm just automatically hitting its mochi, but I guess with one liberated. I, I don't know. That's confusing to me. Yeah, the, the key is that he was uh, already escaped with one of the back yeah. checkers. Double shot, though, you know. I guess yeah. uh, this is gammon save ish. Not quite, but a gammon does matter for Hideaki. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mochi so. is actually playing a uh, gammon save here. It's a, uh, yeah, very natural unstacking play there. Mm -hmm. And 6 2, that's going to make a board point. And it's looking like the kind of game that Hideaki wants to play. Mochi's not going to have an anchor. He's got good ammunition for an attack. So this links up blots. Um, oh, sorry, looking at Hideaki's side. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, makes a point. That helps. 6 2. I guess this could hit loose. That just seems like an awkward thing to oh, do. Oh, I was thinking about the running play, but I think, yeah, of course, yeah. hit loose. That's much better. 11 checkers in the zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good yeah. spotted, Nick. Um, Six, one. You just got to be thinking about the right game plan, right? I'm yeah. thinking blitz, and so I see, well, I can hit. But look at I the guess. duplication with uh, 13 to 7. Might, maybe he gets tempted. Okay, okay. He doesn't. He plays the right play. He's up in the race a little bit. Oh, wow. Ooh. You really Good need shot. a few more threes. Yeah. Just like four more threes, and this is great. <laughs> um, I guess we're going to... Oh, yeah. Do you make the 5 you cover? Nope. I like this. I think this that's the wrong fascinating. idea. fascinating. It is wrong, but yeah. it's uh, it looks natural to do because it's pure, and he's in time pressure, so he's trouble having trouble figuring this out. It's... He can have an anchor with it. That yes, feels it, like a... Exactly, and no shots, uh, and he's up in the he race. He's going to yeah. play blitz. Okay, so he makes a mistake under time pressure. But it's a good mistake because this is an easier position when it works, right? It's just like with time pressure, just go ahead and do this pure thing and you're, the game's kind of going to unfold pretty easy, you know? It was just one of those, uh, I mean, I covered this so much. Ooh, look at this the... play. Now Mochi oh, goes a little nuts and hits there. No, oh, it wasn't. The yeah, inaccurate. These, uh, these prime versus blitzing moves that Hideaki was just facing, I covered it so much in depth in pure strategy. And I just yeah. instantly realized that this was not the time to go for a pure prime play. You should go for a blitzing play. But Hideaki mm -hmm. didn't see it. Um, yeah. So. And Mochi's in the driver's have... seat now. It's it's very impure. Oh, wow. So just a five leaves a lot of life in this game. Wow. But um, on oh, the yeah. ropes, if he doesn't find it, great shot. Great shot, yeah. But Mochi still has a big edge here. He's. Yeah, I expect oh. a lot of double hits ah. here. Is this going to be one of them? Yes. Probably, yeah. Good play, Mochi. Nice. Yeah. If he can dodge the bullet here, then he's in a good shape. Yeah, 
He does so far. So entering good. one very quickly is nice though too on the five. If he, like Hideaki is pretty happy just finding a an anchor game here. Oh yes, that's true. A lot true. of good contact that way. It is, yeah. And there's even a couple of shots here. Okay, five. And he four. gets it. He gets it. Yeah. What do you do with the the double shot? Seems too much against a four point boar. So I'm yeah. thinking six to two as well. Me too. But it's yeah, close. Yeah. Wow. Look how close they are. With four checkers back, you really do want to get that moving. Yeah. So good play, Hideaki. Good play. Yeah. I mean, he finds the tricky play to find. Even though it yeah. was a small mistake, uh, that yeah. was a tricky play to find. It's kind of the pure thing to do, right? It's it's mm -hmm. neat to see him airing on that side. Oh, just yes. once again, just needs to be on the five. And, yeah, he's and oh, he's unlucky now, Hideaki. Ooh. All of the contact value, yeah, and I think just yeah. clear, yes. Uh, this is not looking good for Hideaki. Okay, okay, okay. okay. He's back. Yeah. <laughs> not over yet. This it is. It's very strippy, so it should be tough yeah. for Mochi to come home clean here. Can't clean Ooh. up the seven shot right away. He might have to leave another one. Oh, wow. He's just going to play to the six and leave sevens and eights, right? Yeah. Or, or he can clear the eights. Yeah. I that, just. Yes. I, that, I, that's yeah. what I th was thinking about. But clearing the eight is also, I mean, then you have a very long way to go, and you want to yeah. exploit the moment now when your opponent has a plot in his three point board, and you have a five point board. So that that's, really uh, favored the, the big play now. That's good. It's all holding game theme too against a five point anchor like this or a 20 point anchor it's just uh it's not too often that you can afford to leave your eight before clearing your mid you just really need it to help you with the mid yeah it's gonna support a lot of uh oh this is interesting i probably would have done 12 to 8 but he Me finds too. an eight safe play oh yeah, yeah exactly i, I would have done your yeah. play as well nick yeah but that was pretty cool I mean, Hideaki uh, developed oh. his position. Oh. And of course, punished for it. Yeah. Um, I guess he's going to... Play safe. Yeah, here we go. Is yeah. it is it three days or four to two, though? Interesting question. question yeah. Too much. Tw 20 yeah. seconds left for Mochi on the clock. And Hideaki's okay. going to slot here. I think, is he going to come out for contact? Oh, yeah. Oh, I love yeah, this. Yeah, 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 it makes yeah. a ton of sense here. He finds it now. With, again, so yeah. again, indicated by the two checkers dead on the, on the ace point there. Yes. Except you can for afford a whole bunch more contact. It's only oh, double four. Much. Wow. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. In this case, it's just he ha the, the 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 dragon is from the rear, uh, yeah. and the tail is in front. Uh, in the front. So I guess that's not a dragon on the tail. It's something else. I'm uh, rooting for Hideaki though, because I oh. want to see more time pressure games. And here we yeah. go. We get the shot. Here we go. I mean, he has to hit it. And Come get on, Hideaki. Now is the time. Yeah. Oh, big miss. Okay. Now it's looking very bad for Hideaki. Is it a 5-6? <laughs> oh, I saw oh. the double twos. I guess 5-6 works. Okay. Okay, there so now is the time, Hideaki. This is the critical moment. He hits it. Oh, oh it's not over yet. Oh. It's not over yet. Um, what and what nauseating games these guys are yes. playing. This is just brutal. But they both just look so cool too, you know. Like they're they're a little stressed out by decisions, but neither of them seems to even notice the super jokers happening constantly in this match, you know. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Um, Hideaki is playing so um, freakingly amazing. I gotta yeah. say, he's just playing so well. Uh, mm -hmm. He's in a one, I think. What is he now? One point three or something in this match. Um, one point six, and uh, yeah, Mochi's at a three point one. He's, yeah. What he's, was his one checker play at Blunder? I'm I'm forgetting now. It was uh, in the uh, game one, I think, where he didn't, where he failed to come out uh, with the splitting the, the back angle for contact. Yeah, that's right. Contact. The one where it's like super easily overlooked too, yes, right? It's exactly. Just a very, not yeah. a natural play at all, yeah. and that's that's all that hit him. Okay, six five. Uh, okay, rules for him too. This is still winnable for Mochi just yes. with a hit. And for some reason they don't. Wow, six oh. one. <laughs> Jesus, ouch, Joker Town, double five, <laughs> wow. What, what even is this? He's like slightly, is he winning if he just runs? He's He's got 41.4%, oh, but of course he got to count the race yeah. and he's got to realize that he's almost well, it's only one money. checker off and he's going to be bearing off, so he has to be a favorite if he just runs all the way, yeah. Oh, oh no, he's not a favorite. He's but not a favorite. Oh, he's going to make a blunder player. here under time pressure. Oh, he makes oh. a blunder. Oh, oh yeah. wow, Hideaki. It's too good of a race with all that wastage. Yeah, I mean, it kind of makes sense. And look at this. Now Mochi, yeah. Oh, he wasted a lot of race value making this play. Rather than getting home. I don't think home, it's going to cost him the, the PR race, though. It seems like Hideaki should still have it there. I think so, but let's see. Yeah. I'm curious. Are we? 
Yeah. Let's have the transcriber Hossein Paknahat. Let's yeah. show us the summary, Hossein. Entirely possible that he'll lose the match because of it, though, and just having given away a little bit of racing equity there. Yeah, yeah. that's true. He could have come back. No, no, look, Hideaki is yeah. still way ahead in the PR. Uh, mm -hmm. Still playing an amazing match, even though he just committed a big blunder under time pressure. Yeah, a tactical difficult blunder. play. How do you have... Oh, I could think about that. Like, you tell me, I look at the race on the board there and know exactly what it is, and I still am not certain yeah. which one is going to pay off more, you know? Yeah. Um, okay, so it's looking like a 1-1. A one, one. This is a good result for Hideaki. He's, uh, he's adding uh, a, a, an even bigger differential between them in the average PR department. And mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. it's kind of like in chess when you're up a piece, then you just want to exchange pieces and have fewer uh, pieces left on the board. It's the same here now. It's just Mochi's yeah. got three, cha tri uh, three matches left now rather than four. So that's less wiggle room to... Yeah to win for Mochi, so all in all, uh, oh, it's actually not over yet. I was gonna, I was waiting for him to roll the set and just like yeah. waste all your breath on that one. <laughs> so like, oh, never mind, I'm still playing. <laughs> Double four, five, or six, oh, no. Ooh, it's it looked a win. like it, it looked like it. <laughs> a win for Mochi and a PR win for Hideaki. What yeah. a match from Hideaki, what a performance from Hideaki. What a player he is. Yeah, it's really incredible. I, uh, you know, you expect him to put up some good results after everything we saw in the contender tournament, but I still somehow you find it hard to believe that he's going to be able to do it again. And he's really playing like he's been doing this for years or something, you know, yeah. like he's just he's like a real solid super grandmaster oh. level player, right? It's crazy. It's amazing. He's yeah. in level four on level four in year four in his uh, backgammon career. Yeah. And Mochi is probably in his year 21, I think, yeah. 22 maybe. I believe. I wonder if uh, what it, what is the cutoff for Super Grandmaster? Is that two five? Two point five over three hundred experience points. Yeah. Oh, okay. look at the look at the result from the the heavy evaluation. Or wow, the heavy very analysis. close. Very close, but uh, Hideagi Weida does take the PR yeah. point, uh, even though the gap narrowed. Very close. That's an interesting result too, because like the thing about this is that Mochi and Hideaki are going to look at this match and feel like they played pretty close on the PR. Where the match we commentated felt like Hideaki was just rolling home with an easy PR win the whole way, That's right? That's true. And, yeah. and just barely hung on to it. Yes. Um, so it's it's funny how that comes out, right? Just the end, the number yeah. at the end. It looks like a really tight race. Yeah. Totally. I mean, uh, I think Mochi is playing good backgammon, but he's Great backgammon. He's yeah. not. Mochi is not hitting his peak so far. Yeah. He just isn't. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not quite the same Mochi as we usually see. And there's yeah. some he's like he's he's at he's running at 85 percent right now whereas hideyaki yeah. is just like blowing the scales for how good you can play backgammon uh, yeah he's literally it's really down. hard to uh, how to be like critical like this too when he puts up a 2.67 was that yeah you know like 2.67 you know, right like uh but but yeah i still feel the same way that it's some of those decisions i think he's capable of finding something better than doing like he could have won the pr race on that game i think yes. you know so, Mochi might yeah. be slightly disappointed uh, when he sees this match because he made mm -hmm. a couple of... Mm, he, he also made a lot of good plays where it's like, okay, this position's got blunder potential, but Mochi find the, the best play. Uh, yeah. But there was a couple of decisions where he's going to regret it when he, he's going to pull his own hair when he sees yeah. the analysis. And he could have won the PR battle here. We saw how close it is. It's literally one, one big error away uh, for yeah. Mochi to win two points here. Uh, but I mean... Good performance from both players, and what a yeah. what a battle we've got going on here, Nick. I'm wondering too. Just like I feel like Mochi's found himself in so many of these. Uh, the A6 comes to mind, where he could either make the bar against the five, like the twenty and twenty four point anchors, like just these really complicated decisions with uh, some time pressure on them and things like that. Yeah. Probably his cube action was pretty tough to figure out in that leading score. Um, yeah, like it, it feels, I'm starting to wonder if he just plays a game that leads to like really complicated decisions for himself or if he's, is he just getting this unlucky I with such so. hard decisions all the time, you know, but I it's, so. uh, yeah. he's had a, he's had a tough run. Yeah. Yes. Very difficult. It's, it's out of his control, whether he's got yeah. uh, running into, to, to easy or tough decisions, uh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, okay guys. So that was match nine. The score is nine, nine. So it's as close as it can be. Uh, the PR mm -hmm. uh, averages are now 2.97 for Mochi after nine matches and 2.67 for Hideaki Ueda. So he's yeah. uh, turning on the turbo 
And uh, yeah, it's really exciting. Stay tuned, guys. It's exciting guys. to see, yeah. Oh yeah, Nick, <laughs> uh, you're gonna be back tomorrow, right? Absolutely, I'm excited to see your Grandmaster analysis after this too. Yeah. Oh yes, exactly. So the viewers gotta stay tuned because we got another secret Grandmaster coming up. You don't wanna miss this one. And uh, yeah, we're gonna have a short commercial break and then we're back with the Grandmaster analysis. The UBC is produced by Backgammon Galaxy. Play among the stars. Hi there. This is the amazing team who made the UBC production that you're watching right now. You can support us by donating any amount using this QR code or the link in the description below. Donate $50 or more to get a personal shout out later in the video by Mark Olson. Donate $1,000 to get a shout out and your own custom avatar on Galaxy. Thank you so much for your support. Another way to support Backgammon Galaxy is to place your sports bets on BetGalaxy.net, the fastest way to build your Bitcoin bankroll while Bitcoin is skyrocketing. BetGalaxy.net is a Bitcoin-only bookmaker created by the Galaxy team and accepts players worldwide. Create an account now and place your sports bets. Olson encouraging viewers to quote, smash that like button. Remember to smash the like button. Remember to smash the like button. Smash the like button. Make sure to smash the like button. After several violent incidents, the victim has decided to come forward. Our correspondent, Wilson Similio, brings you the exclusive interview. Viewer discretion is advised. Can you tell us what happened? Well, I've been smashed over and over again. It basically started when Black Diamond Galaxy created their YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And Mark literally encourages people to smash me. And so that's what they do, excessively. Yeah, okay guys, uh, we're back here. That was a little uh, delicious little edit cut from uh, from our producer. Um, the score is 9-9. Nine, nine. Uh, this was match nine. All we have is three matches left. The competition couldn't be any tighter. Um, Mochi made a great comeback. Uh, he played well today, except for a couple of blunders. It sh in the end, it actually turned out that the PR race was closer than we thought when we watched the, the match uh, real time. Um, so there's definitely uh, some cool positions today to analyze with the secret grandmaster. But before I reveal who it is, I have got a couple of shout outs to make. So we got some donations from you guys. We've got one from uh, James Newman, $50. Thank you, James. Calvin Delvin. What an amazing uh, donation this was. The first 1K donation. So Calvin is going to get his own personal avatar on Backgammon Galaxy. That's so cool. Thank you so much, Calvin. It's, uh, it's pretty, pretty cool. Um, and then we got a shout out for uh, Ralph Bird, of course, uh, for the sponsor of uh, one of the sponsors of the UBC for the Melbourne event. It's going to be uh, a, an online tournament series played on Backgammon Galaxy. Um, it's gonna be lots of tournaments. There's a big main event, a 500 euro event, and you can see here on Backgammon Galaxy, we've already got some tournaments in the lobby. Uh, we're gonna use tournament coins to buy in to the satellites and for the main events, so you need to get some tournament coins if you wanna participate. It's gonna be really cool. Um, and what else? We've got one more shout out, I believe. Um, oh yeah, we got a shout out for Brandon Burgess. Burgess as well a hundred dollars thank you very much Brandon we appreciate it okay and now for the secret Grandmaster reveal today might be a little bit uh, of an interesting guest for you guys because I think some of you know him some of you some of you might not know him as well yet but he was a, a contender at the ultimate backgammon championship in 2020 he's a Grandmaster from Norway and uh, you we're gonna ask him is he actually Norwegian or is he Greek or what is he so drum roll please Elias Krizikos, welcome to the show, my friend. How's it going? Thank you, Mark. Uh, thanks for inviting me. It's going well. Thank you. Everything's fine. Okay, that's good. So, um, are you a Norwegian Grandmaster or are you a Greek Grandmaster? Well, I'm actually both. Uh, I have a, My mother is Norwegian and my father is Greek, so I'm basically 50-50. Uh, that's cool. But you're currently mm -hmm. residing in, in Norway, right? I'm living in Norway, yes. Yeah. 
Um, there's a lot of good players from Norway. Uh, we had great representation in Gibraltar from the Norwegian delegation. Uh, lots of grandmasters up there, so you must be doing something good. I don't know what it is. Uh, are there any secrets to the Norwegian success? Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's the it's the climate. I'm not sure. <laughs> it's uh, you, we we had a um, uh, Norwegian backgammon has been strong for years actually. Uh, but uh, of course, Norway is a small country. We don't have that many players as other countries like uh, Denmark or or um, uh, USA or Germany. Uh, but the level is quite high. So uh, uh, the, the the good the good Norwegian players are really good, really strong. Yeah. That's my impression as well. Okay, uh, Elias, we got a, a pretty cool match uh, to dissect here. Um, I have a rolled out version uh, from Stick Rice. He did us the favor of rolling out lots of key positions. So I have an, a little extra uh, going on here in my Extreme Gammon window. And we can see the PRs actually shifted a bit from the official result that Mochi's PR went up to a 3.0 and uh, Hideaki stayed at a 2.4. Uh, but let's get into it, Elias. Uh, so you made some mm -hmm. flags here. I'm in game one. Oh yeah, by the way, the viewers notice the delicious little galaxy uh, board, uh, earth board skin I have for my extreme gammon here. That's a nice little treat from Rain. And uh, yeah, we're all happy with the, the skins from Rain. Okay, so we get to this pretty standard early double take. And then we got the first uh, flag, which is the 4-1 for Mochi. So what's going on here, Elias? Uh, let's see. I have a little delay for from the stream, so I'm just. Oh going no no! To don't look, look at the my, stream. Uh, you should. Could you open uh, up an extreme gammon window of your own? That's better. Yeah, yeah. I have it. Uh, yeah. So. So it's the first six uh, one where Mochi actually finds the really really good play here. He comes down to thirteen to seven slots, the the seven point rather than coming out. Um, so you can just listen. Yeah to yeah, that, that's interesting. Uh, I was listening to uh, to you. Uh, and uh, Bill Roberti about uh, when to jump out with the six uh, and when not to. So I, I, this is a difficult position, I think. Uh, I'm not sure I would find it, but uh, after after uh, Mochi's play, it seemed um, kind of logical what he did. Uh, he's uh, uh, basically behind in the race. It's a simple rule when you're behind in the race, you, you basically don't race. Um, the problem here is you might get prime, primed, but the asset of playing 13 to 7 is that you can make your own prime. Uh, and at the same time, you have, you have the safety of the one point. So if things mm -hmm. go bad, you, you, you still uh, uh, can rely on, uh, on an ace point game with good timing. Okay, yeah. Um, pretty good play from Mochi here. I think probably most players yeah. would have just come out. So uh, that was cool. Okay, so then, then we got another flag right after. We got a 3-2 for Hideaki. And not that there's blunder potential here, but there are definitely mm. uh, many variants here. So what do you think about this move, uh, Elias? I was a little surprised uh, by uh, Hideaki's move here. Uh, I think it was a little un anti-thematic. Uh, I mean, uh, the basic idea is that you, you don't split in front of uh, overstacked uh, uh, points like uh, like uh, Mochi's uh, six and eight point here. Mm -hmm. um, the idea is that you um, those those checkers are screaming to be used for attacking. So, mm -hmm. uh, but but he doesn't have timing not to split. So he has to split. So once you decide that you have to split, you have to find out okay which point do you want to split to. Uh, how I approach it is that I, I split to the point that I want to make. Uh, which is the 21 point. I, I don't want to be stuck in a 22 point because if Mochi makes his bar point or even makes uh, his golden point, I can easily get prime myself. So mm -hmm. uh, splitting to 21 for me is um, look, looks natural. And once you do that, uh, I don't think 24 to 22 improves uh, your position more. Uh, while 13 to 11 improves it, I think uh, mm -hmm. it, it uh, prepares to to make the bar point, and it uh, gains uh, more outfield control. So I think it's a yeah. balanced play. Yes, uh, maybe I could add a bit of tactics that after the right play here, uh, the six four and six two, which are the best roles for for Mochi, they're a little bit duplicated because that's also roles that makes the bar and hits loose on the four point. 
Uh, so there's a little mm. bit of duplication as well. Maybe Hideaki was thinking that he w didn't want to strip the midpoint too early in the game or something like this. But uh, I like your analysis with uh, or the theme behind it that you don't really want to step up under the gun when your opponent has this avalanche of a front-loaded blitz position ready to fall down in your face. So yeah, I think I think uh, Hideaki's play gives Mochi too many good roles. Mm -hmm. Too many attacking attacking roles. Yeah, all the four three, four two, three two, five three. Yeah, a lot of them. The, the doubles. Yeah. And the doubles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And 6-2 uh, hitting in the outfield, yeah. Okay, let's move on. Um, so but, but I have to say, it's uh, it's uh, it's very often correct to split with both men, but it's not easy to find one. Mm, yeah. It's uh, it's often a diff difficult place. Bill Roberti calls it a Middle Eastern split in his new book. I'm not sure exactly where that comes from. <laughs> Maybe that's mm. something they do a lot. Maybe some of our Middle Eastern uh, viewers can let us in on that, if that's true. Um, okay, moving on here, scrolling through game one. Uh, Mochi rolls that beautiful double six joker, which just gets him out of trouble completely and turns the game around. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there's another flag here, a 5-4 for Mochi. This was actually interesting because he chose to give four shots rather than zero shots. So what, what's going on here, Elias? Uh, let's see. Um, well, how I, I approach this position is uh, I ask myself, how urgent is it to to clear um, to tr to start to clear the twelve point? Um, the second question I ask is how is the race, mm -hmm. and uh, the third question is how is Black's position? Um, position. Yeah. So I I feel that. Uh, you don't really have to take the chance, uh, the risk now, because uh, next roll it will probably be the same situation. Uh, Black has a strong position. Uh, the four shots you give are, I think, too costly. And you can actually be patient and uh, try to clear the point naturally next time, because mm -hmm. you don't have any bad rolls. I don't think I would have find, uh, found the right play 6-2, 6-1. Uh, mm -hmm. I think I would play the second best mm -hmm. uh, and just rely on getting a good role and clearing the point yeah. actually next time. Uh, you don't have any bad, bad roles next time. That's true. That's a great uh, point. So, so you have at least two I, I, roles to roll a, a natural clearing move. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, if, uh, if, um, if Mochi, for example, had a blot in, in, in his, uh, sorry, if Hideaki had a blot in his uh, home board, like if he had, uh, had a blot on his two point, I've checked actually this position. Then it would be uh, marginally uh, uh, wrong to to clear. Okay, so no but it would have been yet. close. Okay. Very very close. So because then uh, if if you get a hit, you, you you still have a chance to counter attack from the bar. Yeah, that's a great point because it's a fly shot. So Hideaki would need both dice to hit. Mochi would have a direct mm. hit on that uh, potential blot in the inner board. That's a great, great mm. point. But that's not the case here. Hideaki does have a tight pos front position, no blots at all. And uh, yeah, no. it's just the wrong idea here to give uh, four uh, shots to get hit, especially when you have so such an easy time actually clearing it without uh, ever leaving a shot when clearing the 12 mm. point. Okay, mm. moving on here. Um, then the next flag is a double three for Mochi. Uh, he's now bearing in against the four point anger. So this is like a late game contact uh, position. Mm -hmm. And uh, he has a double three to play. And he manages to make almost mm -hmm. a blunder here. So what do you think about this position, Elias? Yeah, I, 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 again, um, um, I mean, the first three uh, threes are uh, uh, easy. Uh, mm -hmm. The last one, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't really understand the logic behind the Mochi's play. There, there must be one, but I, I don't get it. Um, I guess he he wants to 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 clear his points quickly for the race. I think maybe that's his, mm -hmm. uh, his yeah, thinking. That that uh, seems but, to that seems to be what he was thinking because this is a race clearing play. You clear the the yeah. real point, and then you're ready to clear that point next roll. Uh, but the best play is mm. more of an attacking play, right? Yeah, I think that's the idea of uh, XG's play, that you you basically get ready for attacking when uh, when black leaves. So uh, once you don't have the, the 
blood on on the, uh, the deuce point you you can freely attack with uh with uh, five two five one um mm -hmm. yeah basically both rolls yeah two, um, one double two double five yeah and your doubles become really really good yes yeah double five is is uh i think double five gives a shot anyway yeah uh it does yeah. that's true uh can you or yeah, it gives a shot. I mean, you could, after the right play, you could actually just play four checkers from six to one with double fives. So double fives doesn't leave a shot after the right yeah, play. Yeah, mm, yeah, you're right, you're right. Um, five, so, double five becomes better, yes. So that's an even yeah. bigger argument. I think the argument I yeah. made uh, during the commentators, uh, um, live, the live commentary was that uh, Hidiaki is running out of timing here. He's, he's got bad six, fives and sixes, and he might be squeezed off mm. his anger. So that for that reason, mm. you want to have a tight inner board. You don't want to be playing for the race here. Uh, then you can't. Yeah, and you also preserve your your uh, you preserve a six. Yeah. In case of uh, six one and six two. Mm -hmm. uh, Great point. This mm. is one of those spots where it is qu quite nice to just preserve a six here. Okay, moving on. The next. But it's, one. it's a it's a crossover. Maybe I think that's what uh, Mochi is thinking uh, thinking about uh, the three he gets in on the six point is a crossover. Okay, which can yeah. mean something in the race. So it's better for the race and it's a clearing play. So I guess it's just the wrong idea. You don't want to make a racing play here. You want to make a more uh, timing based attacking play. Save the six. Mm. Uh, that's a tactical uh, theme. And uh, yeah, be ready to attack because your opponent yeah. is about to be squeezed off his anger. Mm. Okay, next one. The first blunder in the match. 3 1 for Hideaki. But I mean, that's a pretty tough one. What do you think about this position, Elias? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, he played it very quickly, and it looks very natural to just slot, uh, slot the one point, play like he did. But yeah. uh, if you if you if you uh, slow down a little bit and uh, think about the position, then you see that the gains of advancing from the twenty one points are really big, uh, and you it's it's basically with with no risk that you can do, do that play. Uh, of course, you risk getting. Uh, you risk double two and double one that become uh, big uh, uh, great roles for for mochi but uh, but it's not more than that i think it's uh, yeah it's double two and double one that are really dangerous but other than that you you gain on uh, six one six two and six five yeah it's a so, it's a really really cool tactical play um i'm just gonna show the the dice distribution mm -hmm. here for the viewers to see uh yeah, maybe this is too technical. Um, it's it's a tactical move, right? So I guess the the what lesson can we learn here? I I guess it's like when you are at the critical moment in the match, which we could definitely say that this is. Now you want to spend some time on the tactics. Look at all the numbers. Make sure that you play with accuracy here. Uh, whereas maybe in the early game, the opening middle game, you can rely more on pattern recognition. But this one is a really mathematical and tactical position. Um, but I, I don't think he even saw it. I think he just moved the other one quite fast and then... Yeah, you, you said uh, uh, in the commentating that uh, the blunder was that he didn't see the play. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Another good lesson. A, yeah, yeah, you have to see the right play to, to, to play it. So. Yes. Uh, okay, and then we get this interesting uh, cube action. Um, or you, it's, it's, it's a very close tech pass decision. Eventually, uh, Hideaki did pass. Uh, I have a rollout here, and it became even closer in the rollout. Twenty million points. Uh, what do you think about this position, Elias? And are there any general concepts or rules that we can apply here? Uh, well, basically, you you need a in order to to be able to take this, you have to have a combination of uh, some shot equity and, and some raise. And I think you have both here. It's fourteen pips, but. It's it's not a straightforward race because uh, Mochi might have to to bury some checkers deep in his uh, home board with with uh, some fives uh, and fours, for example. So and uh, Hideaki's distribution is good. He uh, Mochi might end up with a with a hole in his four point. So I think uh, all those factors lead lead to a take. Mm -hmm. um, um, I, I like to think I would find this one, but uh, yeah. Obviously. If you think of it, if you think of it in terms of a straight race, then you think it's a pass. But this is not a straight race. Yeah, it's too much contact. Yes, 
Uh, I like the way you break it down, the, the mix of race equity and contact. Um, of course, you okay, so you mentioned some factors that makes the race a bit worse for Mochi, that he probably has to bury some checkers, that he might have a gap on the four point. But a, 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 a point that is makes the race worse for Hideaki is that he's got very long crossovers to get those mm -hmm. checkers home, and he's got two, four, six crossovers just to get into his inner board, while mm -hmm. Mochi only has two short crossovers to get into his inner board. So that's going to slow down. Uh, maybe it kind of uh, evens out the other disadvantages uh, of Mochi. Mm. Um, yeah, I think I said uh, in the in the in the stream that uh, 16 pip, two pips either way, and it would swing the decision and make it rather easy. 12 pips down, it would be an easy take. 16 pips, maybe mm. it's too much now because this is not a holding game anymore. At least not the way I define a holding game. I I, I call this type of position a late game contact position mm. because the yeah. holding phase is we're kind of in the latest stage here and this it, it's more important what is the contact here it's not so much is the anger on the on the 24 point or 22 point it's it's more about you got three three points in front of your anger with two gaps there in the seven and eight and the race is 14 pips so uh mm. yeah it's a very specific position and i guess if you know your references you're probably going to figure out that this is probably a pretty close decision yeah i mean it's difficult if you if you add uh, two pips to uh hideaki's uh position then it uh, I don't know it probably uh, leans towards the pass but uh, so yeah if, he, if you if you give him uh, if he's down 16 pips in, uh, instead yeah uh, then, then it becomes a, a narrow pass yes yeah exactly uh, so yeah okay moving on to game number two uh, the first uh, flag here was an interesting position a 5-2 uh, for Hideaki with two very different game plans you could say so what do you think about this position Elias Let's see, five two. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's it's a tempo play from uh, from Hideaki. He tries to take the uh, initiative away from uh, from Mochi. Problem is, he's outboarded, so um, uh, he is uh, actually sacrificing a permanent good asset, which is the four point, uh, in order to potentially gain from the from the double hit so mm -hmm. um, but the main factor I think is that uh, Mochi has a stronger board so so this play is uh, um, it's anti-thematic I think yeah but if you if you if you put a if you put a checker from uh, Mochi's uh, midpoint to to the to his five point to his golden point yeah then uh, then Hideaki's play uh, is actually correct because uh, because then uh, Mochi has more attack and oh. there is a really need for Hideaki to stop him. Ah, like this. Okay, I'm just setting up for the viewers here. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. Now it's a demanding play. Now it's clearly yeah. right to double it. Okay, so that extra mm. attacker, it, made, uh, it makes the tempo gain that much bigger because so yeah. many of Mochi's roles are just going to attack and blitz you. So, mm. yeah, that's a nice, nice concept. So you can see it like the more... Uh, the more initiative your opponent has, the stronger the tempo gain becomes. Mm, yeah, and I mean, I mean, Hideaki is not in real danger danger here, so he's, he's not desperate to, uh, to to stop Mochi. He should just make make his point and uh, equalize the advantage that uh, Mochi has with uh, with with his uh, two point board. Yes. Um, yeah. And the, 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 the reason Elias started out by saying it's kind of anti-thematic anti to make this bold play where you expose yourself to a direct shot uh, is because your opponent has a two-point board and you've got a one-point board. So it's McGreal's safe versus bold criteria, right, Elias? That you want to make the safe play when you're outboarded. It's basic backhand. Yeah, <laughs> basic backhand. Yeah, but just trying to, you know, we have less experienced uh, backgammon players watching. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm trying to spread it out. Okay, then we got the next flag here. Uh, the cube decision from Mochi. I was surprised here. I, I thought it was weird that he didn't cube, but I think that he was playing on too good to double. What do you think about this cube action, uh, Elias? Wow, I, I mean, uh, I think I think um, the reason this position is not too good is that uh, Mochi is actually down in the race. Uh, Hideaki is leading the race. Yeah, 10 pips. Uh, and uh, yeah. And also, it's something with the score. I mean, uh, gammons are not so important for uh, for uh, for Mochi at the two zero. Mm -hmm. So uh, so uh, 
doubling and getting one point is uh, you should be happy with that in this position getting to to four away that's a good point that's a great point we've talked a little bit about this in the earlier streams as well that the match score the points in a match they don't have the same value and going from four away to three away is just not as big a gain as going from five away to four away so yeah, yeah. that's uh, that's a great point a little bit of match theory mm -hmm. there mm. so you should be less aggressive to play for too good to, do to double yeah. And what about the position itself? I mean, obviously, it's a very, very strong position for for Mochi here. Uh, Hideaki, mm. uh, he's got both ace points, which is really nasty. Disconnected and getting primed. Mochi's got the rack. He's got some shots. So I think the only thing Hideaki's got going for him is that he's up in the race, I guess. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, both play, players should probably be, be happy with... Uh, with uh, double pass yeah like emoji getting one point and hideaki not risking losing again <laughs> so yes it seems straightforward mm -hmm. but mochi didn't mm -hmm. think so um so now i'm just moving on here a bit uh okay i'm skipping a couple of sticks rollouts here to get down to the next flag just to not make a three hour streaming uh okay so we're getting into this ace point game mochi is bearing off and not much else happened in this game. Okay, that was pretty straightforward. Moving on to game three. Um, scrolling through the opening here. 6-1, uh, 5-4, that's a loose hit. And then we got a double three for Mochi. Uh, I I don't know if you flagged this one, Elias. Maybe I flagged it, the double three. I just figured we could just briefly talk about it because it was yeah, like yeah. an interesting decision. Do you have any opinions think, on this double three? Oh, I think this is difficult. Uh, I've seen XG do do this play uh, sometimes, but I'm never sure when when it's it's correct to, to make the golden point and not unstacking the six point. I would uh, probably unstack like, uh, like Mochi did here. Yeah. According so to the I, rollout, I'm not, I'm not sure how to think about when it's right to to make the golden point instead. According to the rollout, uh, <clears throat> the golden point is actually slightly better, ten milli points better. Um, yeah, I yeah, think I if I had to give it a shot, I think that it's got something to do with uh, the concept of purity has increased in value in this position because of uh, Hideaki's two features. One is he's still trapped on the twenty-four point with both back checkers, and he's on the bar, of course. And he's got an impure front position. So for those reasons, uh, the purity is just really, really nice. You create this nice little three prime. Um, but of course, making the three point is, I would say that's probably the default play because you get to keep the eight point and unstack the six point. You make an inferior point, yes, but usually uh, plays that where uh, then uh, succeeds in, in in B and C are better than plays that only succeeds in A, even though A is better than B and C individually. Uh, so for that reason, six to three is probably the default play. But here, I think all the features are there to to make a purer play. Uh, but yeah, you, you fail to unstack, but uh, it's a purer play for that. I think that's why the position demands. And it's, it's, and it's difficult to, to to prime once you you make the three point. Maybe that's a. That's a factor as well. If you make your 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 golden point, uh, all checkers are in play. You can you can uh, you can still yeah. blitz and you can also prime. Yes, I mean usually when you're up 24 pips, you don't really need to prime. You can win the game by just racing or blitzing. But uh, I think because of the weakness with his back checkers, both are trapped on the 24 point. It's still just really really strong to make a pure prime mm. structure. But anyway, mm. uh, we're nitpicking here. It's both plays are perfectly fine and Mochi didn't really make a mistake. Then we got the next uh, flag here, which was actually one of the biggest mistakes in the match. Uh, what do you think about this 2-1 hitting play for Mochi? I think, uh, I mean, it, 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 uh, it risks too much uh, with, uh, with not much gain. Uh, I mean, you gain some pips in the race, but not many. Uh, uh, it's like if you if you make uh, the 20 point you have a permanent asset you can basically just uh, wait for a good sequence and, and double uh, in a roll or two yeah uh, while here you give uh, your opponent too many uh, chances to get back in the game yes uh, he has too many good rolls from the bar yeah i so, think matt kongaya uh, pointed this out in the chat as well all the yeah. the five four the four six the four three uh, yeah, there's a lot of good rolls here. 
I mean, even making the 21 point without hitting, playing 9-7 with the 2 is better. Oh yeah, is it really? Yeah. Okay, yeah, it probably is. Uh, yeah, you're right, it's gotta be better. Yeah, so it's just the wrong idea here. Um, there's uh, there is a little lesson I think here for the viewers, and I'm sure Mochi knows this as well. So I'm a little bit surprised that when you're in a position where you got your opponent trapped on the 24 point with two checkers, sometimes hitting a third checker actually adds to the flexibility of your opponent's back position. It makes it easier, not harder, to make an advanced anchor because all of a sudden you got a, a little bit more flexibility. It's more like five four four three two one advances the anchor. So here, I think, yeah, just make the twenty, the golden point, and then you can basically cube next roll, except for after Hideaki rolling a, yeah, perfect roll like double four, double three, or a fly shot. So yeah, it's it's not a good, not a good move here by Mochi. Anything else we want to say about this position, Elias? Uh, no, I mean, uh, uh, hitting actually gives gives uh, Hideaki some timing. He has a kind of a dis disconnected position uh, with uh, having made his two point and uh, I, I, yeah, I think it's good for him to, to get hit actually. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay, moving on. Uh, yeah, we get into a position where Mochi caches the, the position anyway. So he created a little mm. bit of unnecessary uh, volatility. He could have just have, had an efficient cube without risking all those good numbers. But now he's up 4-0 and we are in game four. So now we're just scrolling through the opening here. Um, okay, we got a little rollout for stick from stick, but we're gonna skip it. And we're gonna see if we can find a flag position here. It gets into a holding game. There's the attack and now the cash. So no flags in game four, pretty mm. uneventful game in terms of PR. Um, okay, so now we're in game five. A good opening sequence for both players. And uh, this one is interesting. Hiyaki makes a pretty aggressive cube action here by doppling this position. It could be a score thing, but what do you think about this position, Elias? I mean, I, I, before uh, uh, doubling, I would check here. What's the race? Um, um, so here, Hiyaki is down in the race. Uh, how is the, the home board? Hiyaki's home board is weaker than Mochi's. Mm -hmm. And uh, does he have any threats? Not really. <laughs> so uh, I mean, uh, uh, none of the aspects you you, you want to have uh, in order to double are there. Uh, of course, uh, when you're uncertain, you could you could imagine that you get a good roll and your opponent maybe rolls something uh, casual. Yeah. Uh, like uh, which is actually what happened. He rolled four five. Yeah. Which is a good roll. Uh huh. Um, and then Mochi rolled 3-5 and it's still after this sequence it's still a double and an easy take yeah uh, and I also checked another sequence with uh, Mochi, uh, Hideaki rolling 4-2 which is also a good roll okay. and uh, Mochi, Mochi rolling 1-2 advancing from 24 to 21 let me just put, set it up for the viewers here so he rolls a 4-2 you said Hideaki yeah yeah that's nice and then Mochi rolls a 2-1 yeah, for example, in uh, yeah, game and 24 to 21. Okay, and this one, yeah, this is still a huge take. Yeah, so th th these are normal sequences, and it's yeah. still, a, still a very easy take. Yes, so. even above average sequence, probably, uh, and it's still mm -hmm. a big take. Yeah. Um, so what was the value of the cube here? Maybe it's a timing thing, like he might get into a, t a priming battle where he has a great timing advantage, but he was just one step away. Of course, he was mm. uh, biased by the score. He knows he needs to be aggressive. He wouldn't have doubled this at 0-0, zero, zero, obviously. Um, and it's not mm. a big mistake. It's half a blunder, 42 milli points. But still, yeah. you know, it, I think uh, you're, you dissected this position well. It's just the, the ingredients are not really there yet. Mm. Okay, moving on. I mean, he has he has some killer rolls like uh, double four. Uh, six four is good, but it's the fours are kind of d d duplicated. Uh, yeah. Six one making the bar, he's still exposed. So six one, yeah, that's that's actually just, pretty uh, pretty loose play. Maybe he's even gonna yeah. run with six one. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. So um, I yes. don't see. Uh, of course, double six also is good. Oh, it's, yes. it's just a doubles, uh, basically. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, moving on here. Uh, so what else do we have? Mochi gets in, into big trouble, but he keeps producing. Uh, he rolls and hits from the bar. That's a amazing sequence with three jokers in a row for Mochi in Mochi's perspective and all of a sudden he's in the driver's seat here and then we got a little flag on a 3-2 Mochi did find the oh, it's right just a, it's a correct play yeah uh, I just wanted to point out the, the technicality of this play because uh -huh. uh, when you have uh, a lot of checkers uh, in the outfield uh, trying to get home it's not always easy to to know how to think or how to move so uh, basically, Mochi does two good things here. He advances with a three, which uh, most players would do. And the nine, nine to seven plays, it's very important because you really want to make the bar point. Uh, you, you want the bar point in order to be able to attack uh, only one point, mm -hmm. uh, but mainly to, to block uh, uh, um, Hideaki's sixes if he manages to enter. Yeah. It is just uh, nice to have, have that seven. It, it serves so many so, purposes. And it's a landing point. landing spot for exactly. your checkers from the midpoint as well. So. It, it's a good point. It's a landing spot. It's an attacking. It's a, <coughs> a little blocking structure. Yeah. So that was a nice play. And obviously, of course, coming up with a three is, is completely mandatory when you're up yeah. in the race and trying to escape. So that was not the difficult part. OK, so moving on here, then we get another little technicality. With a six-two here. Wow, so, I, I was impressed by the, by this play. I'm not sure uh, uh, many players would not find this play. I'm not sure I would find it because you have such a strong position uh, without hitting. So most, I don't know, many players will maybe think that uh, um, they don't have to hit to to win this game or to win win a game. But it's actually very dangerous to let him make uh, let Hideaki make his one point. Because he will be in the game till the end yes. if he makes it. So yeah, he gets a back game. Mandatory. After he, he made the play, I, I saw the value of, of the hit yeah. he has to. And basically, he's, it, okay, he takes, takes a risk, but Hideaki has three checkers in the bar. If uh, Mochi gets hit, he has only one checker yeah. that has to enter. At a normal so, score and the money game is definitely right to hit. You gain The gain in Gammon is, is pretty big, 11% different in Gammon wins. But mm. at this score, Mochi wants to play with as little volatility as, as, as possible. That, I think that's what makes this decision so difficult. You're in a, yeah. in a safety mode. You don't want to play volatile. Exactly. And, and Mochi yeah. does find the, the big play here, which yeah. is actually correct. W would you find it? Uh, I don't know. I, I think I, I would I uh, recognize these things. I, I think I would recognize that hitting loose is the default play at a, at a money game situation. Uh, but uh, I would be in the mindset, like Wilkinson yesterday talked a lot about this scene where the value is uh, at the match score. And here the value is uh, to win high, uh, to, to increase your winning chances and decrease your opponent's gammon chances. So play, don't, don't play volatile. So I think with that mindset, I would probably not hit, but I mean, I think that's what makes Mochi such a strong player that he, he can find the right play, even though it kind of goes against his, his match play mindset. So, yeah, I think it was a tough decision and a good play by Mochi. Absolutely. I hope I could find it. And then he rolls a super double aces uh, from the bar. And uh, all of a sudden we have uh, a game again, but Mochi replies with a joker, 1-6. And uh, oh yeah, the one six. He actually thought a lot about this one six. Uh, you didn't flag it, Elias, because you made the flags uh, before we saw the match. But who yeah. would have guessed that Mochi actually spent a lot of time here? And we were discussing over the board, Nick and I, whether he would actually make a blunder here. But luckily for Mochi, he found the best play. Uh, but yeah, it is alluring. So yeah, I don't know. It's not. It's not an easy play because if you if you focus on on the three checkers on the one point. Hideaki's three checkers on the 24 point. Then you see the value of the uh, of your bar bar point and want to make it, but uh, it's it's too costly because you 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 give too too many good rolls to Hideaki. So it's uh, yeah, it's a good play for Mochi. Yeah, it is. Um, okay, so now we are fasting forward. Uh, Hideaki does manage to get that 5-1 back game. Now he starts a blitz. And then we got a little flag here with a 4-1. Aha. Uh -huh. And he even got the rolled out position from Stick. And according to the rollout, this is an 18 millipoint mistake from Hideaki. The best play would have been 15 to 10. But uh, yeah, what do you think about this position, Elias? 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, this is not an easy play, and it looks so natural to play 24 to 20 with a four. Uh, but I mean, you have to look at what uh, I mean. What does really improve Hideaki's position here? It's not 24 to 20. It's trying to make the four point. Uh huh. That's the key. Uh, that's the basic theme here. I mean, it's it's urgent for him to do everything he can to to uh, prevent Mochi from entering there because if once Mo Mochi enters there, he is a big favorite in the position. Mm -hmm. uh, worst case is that uh, he gets hit and he ends up with the position that he has now a one one five. Uh, I don't know yeah. if we should call it a back game, but. Uh, yeah. So it's it's not urgent to, to play that four that he did. Uh, he should do everything he can to just make the four point, sending every checker over there. And uh, and the same uh, thing happens. I think it's next row. It's the uh, five let's four see. four two. No, let's see. Yeah. That seems pretty straightforward. Yeah. For the four two is. Or is it the four three forward. coming up? There's a flag coming Let's right up see. here. Yeah, the four three. Yeah. Four it's three. it's the same uh, it's the same theme. Uh huh. Uh, you you don't want to give up your uh, Hiraki doesn't want to give up his twenty four points. Mm -hmm. uh, it's too early. He has to continue his attack. If it doesn't work out, he can rely on his ace point. Yeah. I think he was also a little bit unlucky to roll a seven here because then you don't get to uh, increase your your covers because it lands on the the same uh, point that you already got a checker on. So maybe yeah. that confu maybe he was trying to maximize the covers by his play actually. Probably. Uh, Probably. Even though it is quite risky to to lift that anger, you might get blitzed mm. now after this play. Uh, yeah. So the, just stay put and see if you can win the fight of the four point. Mm. Tricky play, but it's it's not an easy play. Uh, no. I mean, I had the time to to check the position and analyze it, but uh, over the board, I'm not sure if I uh, would would find it. But it looks very natural to me now. Yes, yeah, mm. to stay in the anger, um, yeah. stay in, stay stay on the double anger. Okay, so yeah. moving on here. Um, yeah, is that the last flag? We get into an ace point game here, and then Hideaki bears off quite beautifully oh yes then mochi makes a blunder here it's actually a blunder in a containment game position yeah. i was quite disappointed uh, uh yeah. during the commentary for this blunder here but what do you think about mm. this position Elias? well uh, it's basically what you said uh you want to maximize um go all in to to make uh to make the five points i um, uh, i don't see the value in in uh, in mochi's play uh no. So I would just like to. I would really like to 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 hear what what he thought about this. Yeah. I mean, if 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 the point was open, then sometimes your opponent enters with a five two or whatever. Then you like to. Then it's nice sometimes to have your checkers as well spread as possible out in the outfield. But that's not the case here. There's a really battle. There's a battle going on here of the five point, mm -hmm. and you you can increase from two to three uh, builders. So yeah. And, and there's not really a lot of risk to it because if you roll to five, you, you're in trouble anyway. And double five, you're dead anyway, basically. So mm. there's not too much risk in it either, right? It seems quite, uh, yeah. quite straightforward. You win so much more games with the right play here that you even lose less gammons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so more than 3.2% more wins with the right play here. So that was a big one from Mochi, and I, th I found it confusing as well. I think that uh, there was a couple of grandmasters in the chat that was also a little bit confused about this play, why mm. Mochi would make it. Okay, scrolling forward to the 5-3. Small mistake here from Mochi. Three. He played 16 to 8, while the right play was to get your back checkers moving. So what do you think about this position, Elias? Yeah, I... I, I Mochi is probably thinking about uh, the double one. He doesn't want to to give Hideaki that chance. But uh, I mean, if you look at the gains of of uh, playing uh, the the right the right move, mm -hmm. I mean, you get a, a double shot with one four. 
uh, and also one three. Oh, oh yes, that's right. He's forced to break the five point with one four and yeah. one three. Oh, that's really nasty. That's a good so, little bonus. Yeah, and, and the risk is like it's it's minimal. It's just double one. Um, yeah. So you're you're giving away some extra damage on double one, but you're gaining on one three and one four. You're gaining big time. And I think you're also gaining on six one because you got exactly a better exactly double you shot. have a, exactly yeah and it's also nice to get your back checkers going because you you already have eleven checkers in your inner board so you, all you got is four, is four outside checkers you want to spread them out mm -hmm. and start working on the outfield control and it's a bit stiff mm -hmm. to play uh, it's a bit stiff and disconnecting to make uh, Mochi's play here not splitting yeah. the yeah I think he was low on time as well actually. Maybe that was that played a part on Mochi's mm. behalf here. Okay, so uh, a six-one Joga followed by a three-two and mm. Joga from Mochi's perspective. Mochi's perspective, uh, he does make a good play with three-two, uh, maximizes contact, yeah. trying mm. to gain on the small one, and then he hits the uh, the, the back door hit with a five-four. Yeah. And uh, and now he has this six-one to play Mochi again. It's a containment game. He wants to make a six prime. And it's actually a 30 millipoint mistake here on, on the rollout, Mochi's play. Mm. What do you have to well, say about Well, it's almost position? always correct to, to slot the, the bar point in these positions so when, uh, when you have a five point, five point board with the opponent on the bar. So uh, it's, uh, it's, it's never a big, big mistake to do it anyway. Yeah. Mm. So when in doubt, just slot from the rear. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I mean, there is of course the six-one. Uh, you're giving away some some risk uh, if he rolls the six-one. I mean, you could still re-enter and play a pretty good contact game if you does roll the six-one from the bar. But the gain yeah. from the right play—that's the thing. You have a much bigger gain now. You got three attackers or builders for the ace point, yeah. and you got eights that makes the six prime. So there's a much bigger gain mm. uh, after Mochi's play. It's going to be difficult to make the six prime, and all you have is two attackers when he enters on an ace. So yeah, uh, then you're faced with. Uh, I mean, you have to hit lose if he enters, and then uh, then he will get a direct shot with all the ones. That's true, and then you so don't it's, have a six. So it's prime. actually it's, it's a bigger risk not to slot. Uh, not yeah, to slot the seven it's the it's like any other backgammon uh, decision. Do you accept some short-term risk to mm. gain long-term safety, or do you just uh, do the other way around. <laughs> so yeah, that's, he should have taken a short-term risk here to gain on the long-term safety. Uh, okay, exactly. so moving on. Uh, yeah, then we get into this uh, redouble pass. It was a super narrow uh, drop uh, because Mochi still hasn't made mm. the six prime and Hideaki's take point is 11%. So super narrow a drop. Uh, I don't think we mm. need to talk too much about it. It's a pretty... Uh, mm standard reference position. So go look at reference positions in cube like a boss, then you'll get this position. So moving on to game six. Um, okay. The first flag is down here, the double three for Hideaki. So what's going on here, Elias? Yeah. Well, uh, I'm not sure. Um, uh, I don't see the gain of, of, uh, of making uh, the golden point and leaving that uh, direct shot on the three point. I mean, this is a blitz position. It's not a prime position. Mm -hmm. uh, you, after you hit on the bar point and you make the three, I would probably make the 21 points. Just uh, make sure to, to get the anchor and uh, mm -hmm. not get a double two on my head. Um, and it's a balanced play. Uh, mm -hmm. With no risk, uh, yeah. I think the returns with three is, uh, are, are too costly uh, when you play like uh, like Hideaki did. But he, he had time pressure, so I, I yeah. saw that he, he he played what what looked looked the best. But uh, if he had more time, he would probably yeah. The find time find pressure the right move, is definitely a milding circumstance. Uh, but I agree, mm -hmm. it's a, you you your game plan is to blitz here. You're ahead in the race, which goes nicely along a blitzing game mm -hmm. plan. And he's just leaving too many shots here uh, to pursue his priming game plan. Mm. Uh, yeah, that, there's quite a lot. How many shots do we have? We have 14, then we got uh, four more on the bar. So that's 18 just on 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 uh, Hideaki's side of the board. And then you've got some 3-1 double hits, 3-2 double hits, double two is good as mm. well. 
that's a, that's a lot of there's a lot of hits here to be honest double yeah. aces double hit uh yeah too big of a play yeah okay uh i'm skipping a, some green moves here uh to get into do we have more flags or was this the last flag we had oh uh, yes uh, uh there was a blunder yeah you didn't put a flag but there was a blunder from hideagi with a double five it moved 23 he was under yeah, severe was time pressure here huge time yeah, pressure yeah okay. he 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 either goes for a race just runs all the way and oh, then yeah. he's actually got uh 41 in a in a straight race or he shifts to the ace point which yeah. is very inefficient for the race because you're playing mm. 10 ch 10 pips which you don't really utilize very well um mm. to gain some contact <laughs> but it, it's, it's just mm. the wrong idea but he was down to 10 seconds he had to make a quick yeah, decision yeah, yeah. He basically uh, uh, ruined his own uh, race. Yeah. Staying behind. Yeah. It's costly mm. to just stay behind. He could have spent ten pips getting all the way home. Instead, he he created wastage with six to one. Um, mm. But again, it's a mathematical position because you would have to you would first make the racing play, then you would come uh, bring uh, come up with an estimation of how much winning chances you've got. And then you look at the contact play and then you try to figure out, okay, is that better or worse uh, than mm -hmm. in a pure race? And here he's way off. So yeah, time pressure from Hideaki. Mm -hmm. Okay, Elias, do you have anything else you want to share with us now that we're here in the cozy uh, show of uh, the UBC championship final? Uh, well, I have uh, been watching all the matches uh, except the one yesterday, and I think it's uh, it's great uh, learning. It's great entertainment, and it's great to see how two great players cope with uh, with the pressure. And uh, I mean, they've they've had difficult matches. I think every match has been really really challenging, and uh, um, I'm very surprised uh, by positively surprised by Hideaki. Is really his level is amazing. Yeah, and he's been playing like for three years only. You said yeah, four years now. Oh, it, it was four three years. years. Wow, it was three years that's in crazy. Uh, when he, he when he uh, participated in the contender tournament last February. So now he's mm. four years in. It's it's quite that's astonishing. Crazy. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, he seems to just be playing at a two point seven, <laughs> pretty yeah. stable uh, performance. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. incredible. You played in the UBC uh, contender tournament as well, Elias. Are you going to come back and uh, participate again this year? Yeah, of course. If it's uh, if it's going to happen, I'm, I'm coming for sure. There's a little bit of uncertainty there, but we hope to make yeah. it happen. And let's see what happens with the whole Corona situation. Otherwise, maybe well, we're going to get creative and make an online. I, I don't know if that's even possible, yeah. but let's hope we can mm. we can have have the tournament again. I, we already made the agreement with Caleta Hotel in Gibraltar. I hope so. I think many many players around the world are really missing playing live and meeting friends and being social over the board. So it's, uh, yeah, looking forward to, to starting playing again. Me too, definitely. Yeah. Okay, Elias, uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, we really thank appreciate you. it coming on and sharing your knowledge. For the viewers, uh, please smash the like button for Elias as a, as a thanks for all of this uh, lovely knowledge sharing that we've got going on here. Another grandmaster dissecting the two grandmasters playing over the board and uh, And uh, we're gonna put the the scoreboard up in a in a short moment. I just wanna give a little shout out here uh, before we we uh, shut down the stream. Uh, this one is for Bill Roberti. He asked for the odds on on BetGalaxy.net on the Super Bowl, and uh, it just arrived uh, yesterday. Uh, so here we, here we have it in the U.S. format. We got a lot of viewers from the from the U.S. So they can bet because it's a Bitcoin based. So it's not blocked from for us players so if you're into bitcoin and if you're into the super bowl go in on make an account on bet galaxy and place your bets and uh, yeah another shout out again to the melbourne open we've got it in the tournament lobby on bagamangalaxy.com uh we've got all these tournaments already we've got some satellites we've got for instance a 50 euro satellite here you need tournament coins to play so you need to buy some tournament coins um from mind skills that's pretty easy you can do it over paypal or credit card 
and the, the Melbourne Open event is going to be right after the UBC, uh, the week after. And it's it's going to end out in a 500 euro buy-in tournament. I think maybe it's the biggest online tournament uh, we've had so far. That's pretty cool. You can play satellites to try to win a seat if you if 500 euro is too much of a stake. Um, that's it, guys. The score is now, what is it, 9-9? Nine, nine? after match nine so we're gonna be back again tomorrow it's super exciting thank you all for watching now is your last chance to smash the like button because uh, that's it for now see you tomorrow guys bye